Swerve almost got it done, brother. With a double stomp, dude. He got him right in the shoulders. It was beautiful, to be honest. It was sexy. Then that step up stomp, bro. You see that stomp? Who didn't see that stomp coming? Yo, chat. How you guys doing? Sunday night wrestle dream. Swerve Scott to the top rope. Swerve Scott from the top rope. Swerve Scott. Missed the stomp. He might have hurt his ankles. Hangman Adam Page looking for the dead eye on the apron. That'd be a dead to rights if he hits it out there. But instead, Swerve Scott pulls him in first. Into the outside of the turnbuckle, the exposed area. Might have hit his eye. I don't know. Pretty excited. I don't know. Are you guys got What's up, bro? It's been a bit of a tough day today, man. It's been really hard as a as a Red Sox fan and a big Red Sox fan of uh obviously the 03 07 years and beyond, you know. It's been a Losing Tim Wakefield today and all this crazy shit hearing about it and everything. It just sucks, man. Pretty upset about Tim Wakefield. He's sweetheart of a guy. And, um, you know, kind of means a lot to uh, the Red Sox fans out here, obviously, and to me and to everybody. And super shocking to uh, my neighbor died of brain cancer, you know, uh, very, very suddenly. And so I've I've seen that before. Um we are anticipating Edge showing up at Wrestle Dream, so this is a big uh this is, could be a big night for AEW. And we put Edge like right here. Wrestle Dream. We got the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and Jets. I had uh, heavily taken the Jets in that, obviously. Hmm. The buckshot lariat missed, countered with a drop toe hold. I like it. The time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Joe, you need your father's dead into a donation um i don't remember yeah where is that uh gerald armstrong i don't even i guess i'd have to find that clip wherever it is and figure out how to get that to work i i your your mother doesn't he say something like your mother raised a piece of shit or something i have that wasn't that a donation for a while or is that just a clip i don't even remember I don't remember my own shit. Oh, my God. Double stomp across the sternum, it looked like, by uh, Swerve Scott there. Damn. Shout out to Pitbull Blonin, who was donating like a beast the other night. And thank you to Gerald Armstrong for that uh, donation as well. We'll have to figure out where that clip is so we can use it. Because it's a damn good one. Wow, 450. And it's still not over. It's still not over. This is crazy. I'm trying to do you say he's trying to lick those hands? <laughs> what are we what are we doing here? I don't know, man. Well oh, there goes the stream. They got this stream. We gotta find another one. Quickly. Help. 
We got one. We got one. There we go. What's up, chat? Yeah, today was tough, man. Between uh, Tim Wakefield passing away, which was really sad. Really sad, bro. His wife has pancreatic cancer. And and they're like battling that, and it doesn't seem good. Uh, the, I don't know. We don't know though. And then all of a sudden, he's diagnosed with a brain tumor or brain cancer that's really aggressive. And then he's dead today. That is just unbelievable, man. I don't even. I don't remember how old his kids are. His kids have got to be like eleven, twelve, something like that. So that's super sad, and like his wife is still dealing with it. It's just awful, bro. And then the Patriots were the Patriots were just trash. Mac Jones threw the ball like a bitch today. Like he really sucked. He was throwing the ball awful. Is it a full moon tonight? That would explain a lot of things. But yeah, it's uh It was a rough day, dude. Uh as far as New England New England was just man uh, Mac Jones sucks he he threw the ball like a pussy like he was throwing that ball around dude I'm telling you like like he he wasn't he has no zip in his ball he can't zip and sling the ball in and out it's like he can't get it in fast enough and sling that thing in there to make it good I think I had Kansas City like beating the shit out of the Jets 38 to something I mean I don't know what's going to happen. But we'll see. Uh, Pacheco was the pick today. If you were a, uh, it's funny cause I was going to pick Pacheco to be my MVP and I didn't, um, Rasheed Rice was a mistake. But it's only 17 to 12, uh, Kansas city. And I said that that would happen. If you guys recall in my NFL predictions yesterday, I said the Kansas City Chiefs wouldn't start blowing them away until the middle of the uh, or the end of the second half, second quarter, and then third and fourth quarter would be where Kansas City would run away with it. So that's not really what happened, though, because the Jets kind of like came back and they're at 17, Kansas City, but I would have expected Kansas to score 38, so we'll see what happens. Well, Swerve just hit Hangman Adam Page with some kind of foreign object. Yeah, no, it's still not over. Another match that goes 10 years. 100 kickouts. 1 million attempts. The house call, that looked really retarded, by the way. I'm just going to tell you right now, that looked stupid as hell. The house call, that looked terrible. That looked good. That one looked good. Let's see if Butterfly Boy gets beaten. Yep, there it is. There's Swerve's win. He kind of cheated. They really got to switch his music to my, uh, to that Michael Jackson cover that I was talking about. What a clothesline. The buckshot lariat, but Adam Hangman Page hurt himself on the buckshot lariat.
Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that always got me about Tim Wakefield was just that I love. We all love that knuckleball, man. I could, um, we could go on and on about the Red Sox from you know oh three, uh, oh three oh four oh five. That time, um, but especially the oh three and oh four teams, oh two oh three oh four. You know, the, around that time. Like that was one of my favorite times ever to watch baseball, and um, Wakefield was just awesome, man. I I I can't believe that it's whenever someone you know gets a brain brain cancer out of nowhere, it's just very quick a lot of times, and it's just super sad. So it's shocking to hear like Wakefield, you know, oh Wakefield's got cancer. Oh shit. Oh, Wakefield's dead a couple days later. It's like, that's crazy. And Kurt Schilling brought it up on his podcast. And uh, the entire, you know, what pissed me off is that everybody in Boston was just talking about that. Everybody was just talking about, oh, Schilling's an asshole for talking about Wakefield. And I'm like, it's so stupid because now the whole thing is about that. It should be about Tim, you know. Um. I could not, I don't think I could care less about a match than whatever is coming up next, like Wheeler, Yuta, and somebody, or is this Daniel Bryan? I mean, maybe Brian Danielson, I would care about that, but it's anybody else, I don't know. What's going on in the chat? What's up, everybody? What's up, Ashley? What's up, Mysterious Black? Most Blaze is here too, guys. If you can, do us a big favor and hit that like button because you know that helps and we need the like button here, especially on a Sunday night. Not expecting, you know, to be a big, big thing on a Sunday night. Obviously, Sunday nights are dead a lot of times. But we got 74 strong. Nobody knew when I was coming on, so that's pretty cool. So shout out to everybody who is here. Um... And let's uh let's let's vote. If you watch if you watch No Mercy last night, I'd like to see what show you like better. I mean, I don't know if you could say right now what show you like better, but if you already like AW better, I guess it's easy to vote that way. Hey, we got John Moxley and Jim Ross. Look at that. A pair. A pair made in hell. Isn't that beautiful? So sweet. And we're going to time Sal out for that because he's a fucking loser who should kill himself. No Mercy was pretty good last night. Yeah, I think I think last night's uh, NXT No Mercy was probably one of the better NXTs of the I would call it the new era, right? I know that tonight Tony Khan might be calling something the new era, but I'm talking about, you know what I mean, like of the after tr Whoa, shit. Oh shit. quarterback he was that bad that he got benched my dolphins need Jalen Ramsey badly our defense is so garbage yo Picharo yeah nobody looked good today uh, Mac Jones did not look good and uh, he's he's not he's not he doesn't always look very good he looks a little soft at times but Mac Jones looked very soft t today he looked atrocious out there he he was throwing soft balls everywhere he couldn't run the ball to get the first down on the sneak like, you know, Tom Brady used to do all the time. Yeah, I just have no I have no confidence in Mac Jones at all anymore. And I, I didn't really have it before, but I really don't have it now. So, yeah, I think the Dolphins are fine. You you guys are just not you you're the you know, you're you're up and down. You know, that's what you were last year, I think, and it's kind of what you are again. You're you're an up and down in, you're inconsistent sometimes, but a pretty good team. 
a pretty good inconsistent team. That's the Dolphins. So we got some things right in our picks last night on the NFL uh, stuff, and we got some things wrong. It was a very erratic day uh, picks-wise. You know, we were kind of all over the place. You know, we were here and there with, with just about everything, you know. This is a match I just don't care about. Wheeler, Yuta, and Star, or whatever these guys, I don't care about this. I'm going to be honest. So I'll be looking towards the chat for a while here because I just don't care about this match whatsoever. Who cares? It's going to be a lot of chain wrestling and on the ground, but the bottom line is I don't care about these two guys, so they better do something crazy because it's going to have to be a damn good match for me to actually start giving a damn about it. Guys, if you can, please click that like button. Let's get to 69 likes and show everybody just how despicable we really are. The Cowboys D are for real. Yeah, no, I think that the Cowboys uh, Cowboys are going to beat up on any teams that are um, soft. You have to be very big, brooding, powerful, and kind of... I mean, dude, the Patriots lost key people today, too. The Patriots lost their... their like when um what's his name uh shit our our cornerback whatever uh fuck Gutierrez or whatever I don't know when he went down the very next play they scored a touchdown because the guy coming in to take over he couldn't cover uh CC Lamb or Lammy whatever his name is so it's like I forget who got hurt Gonzalez I don't remember. But he, he's, like, really been showing something, and, now, and then he gets hurt. And then Judon got hurt, and then somebody else got hurt. It was just like, dude, this this season's over at this point. With those injuries to defense, the only thing good about the Patriots was the defense, and they're losing key people. Like, forget it. Forget that. And then the, the quarterback sucks. Mac Jones has showed that he sucks. Joe. <laughs> Joe, I sent the Christian remix on the Discord. Oh, okay. Let's go check it out. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. Father figure. He sure did. But here's the thing, Jungle Boy. I never wanted to be your father. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father. But your father's dead. Dead. But your father's dead. Are you going to introduce me to your little friend, Nick Wayne? I understand that you have a father. Gordo also Shit, Bob. Father. Coleman, you have. Gordon Blue. L O L L O L L O L L O L L O L L O L L O L L O L. Chief Wahoo, uh, the Packers looked good in blue. <laughs> oh my God. Chief Wahoo. Chief Wahoo, thanks for coming to five dollar uh, shit bum. This past Thursday, the Green Bay Packers lost to the Detroit Lions thirty-four to twenty. <laughs> like, Alexa, stop! There you go, Chief Wahoo. And we all screwed up on betting for that game. At least the way I bet for it. That was a big mistake. That was a monumental mongoloid of a mistake, Chief Wahoo. Chief Wahoo coming in with the $5 shit bum. Thank you, Chief Wahoo, for the donation. Thank you to Gerald Armstrong and Picharo. Hell yeah, bro. How are you talking about me, bro? Let's uh let's that's a good remix. Let's go back to the remix though. A father. Are you gonna introduce me to your little friend Nick Wayne? I understand that you have a father. Fordlo also had a father. Pillman, you had a father. But your father's dead. Dead, 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 dead. But your father's dead. Dead. <laughs> But your father's dead. 
I know Jungle Boy, he looked at me like a father figure. He sure did. But here's the thing, Jungle Boy. I never wanted to be your father. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father. But your father's dead. Dead, 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 dead. But your father's dead. Dead, 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 dead. But your father's dead. Are you going to introduce me to your little friend, Nick Wayne? I understand that you have a father. Gordo also <laughs> You had a father. Are you going to introduce me to your little friend, Nick Wayne? I understand that you have a father. Ordo also had a father. Pillman, you had a father. But your father's dead. 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 (laughs) That's going to be in my head all week. I had not heard that. That's going to be in my head all week. I'm going to be walking around like, but your father's dead. 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 Dead, 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 dead. I'm going to be like doing that everywhere. And people are going to be like, what's wrong with you? I'm going to be like, it's this thing. It's a remix. Do you know what I'm doing? Red Sox, I just can't believe it. Tim Wakefield died of cancer, brain cancer, today. It's crazy. A lot of people weren't happy uh, that, um, you know, that they, uh, the Kurt Schilling mentioned it on his podcast. This is what it sounded like when Kurt Schilling mentioned it on his podcast. Here it is. Show yesterday, this came of what Kurt Schilling said on his podcast and um, I, 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 he essentially went on and said that Tim Wakefield was, I think he said he had brain cancer. I have the clip here. I don't want to play it. I, I, I actually don't want to, I, a matter of fact, I hardly even want to mention this guy's name, but you have to, to add context. Well, it's in the paper. I mean, you can play no, no, the no, clip. No, no, I'm not talking about Tim Wakefield. I'm talking about Kurt Schilling. No, I know, but I mean, it's all, it's in the, globe it's national yeah. news so i mean so, so the, during, the point well, is is that well, chilling is the one who broke well it. let me tell you this though you Fred. can play the audio Dur- he sounds like an a-hole during the show yesterday this came out and he threw it out there that you know what i'll just play it Here, here's what here's a little bit of what kurt Schilling had to say on his podcast this is what everybody was upset about days ago but now tim's already dead it's just kind of crazy tim wakefield uh, you know you remember tim wakefield the uh, the knuckleballer the knuckleballer. It's a weird way to. It's a weird way to. That's a weird way to describe Tim Wakefield. You know, if you're Kurt Schilling, you know what I mean. I would have been like, you remember, you know, Tim Wakefield, knuckleball pitcher, Red Sox. We we're all part of the big team. His close, close buddy, sort of thing. He sort of set it up weird. I will say that. Um, is uh sick. And uh, I talked with Doug Mirabelli yesterday, and this is not a message that Tim has asked anyone to share, and I don't even know if he wants it shared. But uh, as a Christian and as a man of faith, I've seen prayer work, and so I'm going to talk about it. Um, Tim's wife, Stacy, is one of the sweetest women you'll ever meet. It, it, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, he, it sounds like he's trying to be nice, but it's like, why are you doing that? Because it's like, as a Christian and a man of faith, I'm going to go against a dying man's wishes and just talk about it anyway. You know, it's just because God told me to. It's just weird. That is so bizarre. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't even know. Kurt Schilling's just, he's retarded. Like, I don't, that's all I know is he's retarded. I don't even like, I'm not like angry. Like, oh, the guy's clearly, a, you know, I just think the guy... Kurt Schilling might be retarded is all. I love him for, you know, bloody sock pitching. Love is love everything about that. Kurt Schilling. Uh, even a little while ago, I was, I used to follow him on Twitter for he just moved out of Massachusetts. He was not far away from me. He lived nearby to me. Um, and I was like, yeah, Schilling. And then he decided to move to, to get out of here. I was like, damn, Oh, um, can't believe he's le- he's leaving it. Let's let's try that. Um, 
Tim's wife, Stacy, who's one of the sweetest women you'll ever meet, is uh, uh, very sick with pancreatic cancer. Um, and my wife has talked with her and they're communicating and, and they're going through an incredibly difficult time with Stacy. Um, and I wanted them to know that we're obviously all thinking about them and praying for her. But recently, Tim was diagnosed with a very serious, very aggressive form of brain cancer. Okay, so yesterday when that came out, I started Googling. I'm like, hang on. Did Tim Wakefield let everybody know that he's sick? Is this just something that we're hearing, uh, you know, that he started Googling it? Like, did he let everybody know? Kurt Schilling just told you that he didn't let everybody know. Literally, Kurt Schilling. So, see, like, that's what my problem is with this is, like, first of all, Kurt Schilling probably shouldn't have said this, obviously, because it was against their wishes. But also, the 98.5 Sports Hub, Toucher and Rich guys, their virtue signaling as if, like, oh, you know, Whenever a tragedy happens, we also have to blame someone as the villain as well. When I, I don't see it that way. I think Kurt Schilling's like, in this case, Kurt Schilling like meant well, but he's kind of retarded. And he really shouldn't have told everybody about this without talking to other people first. And pretty much knowing that the guy didn't want this shared with people, he probably shouldn't have mentioned it. So I think that's kind of weird that Kurt Schilling is that stupid uh, to mention it. But also, I think it's weird that, you know, the, the guys on the radio are, like, treating this like, oh, we had, you know, wow, this guy's really bad. It's like, no, you know what you're going to say. You're just building a case. This is news that's already out there. And I went looking around, and there was none of it. And it became abundantly clear that Kurt Schilling had, for the first time, and he admitted right there that Tim Wakefield didn't want people to know, had... Blum but but yet you Googled it to find out if he had told everybody yet, but yet Kurt Schilling said he didn't want anybody to know, and like, it's just funny. Own up his spot. Someone who is obviously, we don't know whether it's cancer or not, had absolutely betrayed any kind of trust that it, it's just as bad as it gets. So I'm sitting there, and I'm listening to that, and, and John and I were talking, and I for a moment was about to go on the air and just go crazy on Kurt Schilling. But then I thought to myself, well, then, to be quite honest... If, if the Wakefields didn't want anyone to know about it, I'm not going to talk about it. I don't want to do it. So, first of all, screw a lot of the blogs, <clears throat> that the Red Sox blogs, that took that audio and put it out there, too. I don't even know if anyone would have known about it because who the hell listens to Kurt Schilling's stupid podcast? So it gets well, out that's there. that's the thing is it gets, that happens a lot. It got, it got picked up by a bunch of people, and I'm like, Jesus, w stop. The, the, the Wakefields don't want anyone to know about this. And you're like, oh, t thoughts and prayers to the Wakefields. No, you're making it worse. So I looked at John, and I was but just like, But now you're well, doing it. Now you're doing it, too. And now I'm doing it. We're all doing it now. I'm not going to talk about it because this is something that is no, something they want to keep private. No, it's not something that we would have talked about. And that. then the Red Sox made a statement. And they Anyway, but that, I, that, that was crazy, man. It was like a day of finding out, oh, this guy's got brain cancer. And then, oh, he's dead a couple days later. Just crazy. That was two, that was two days ago. Then two days later, he's dead. Tim Wakefield. It really it really bothered me today, man. Like I know that a lot of you guys aren't from, you know, Boston, Massachusetts, New England and stuff. But yeah, that really sucked. That news was a downer today. And I started watching all Tim's videos. You know, of the knuckleball and just everything. And then just to know his wife is still battling cancer herself right now. Like a a tough battle apparently with cancer. She's dealing with that. And now he's dead. That is so sadly and terrible. And the the kids, I don't know how old their kids are, but they're young, I think, still. Um, you know, so that's that's no good. Well, I guess they're they're nineteen and seventeen or so, so at least they're a little bit older. But you know, that still sucks. To, that's still very young to lose your parents. Obviously, I lost my father when I was eight. So I, you know, it feels like a lifetime extra at 17 and 19. But that's it's not, you know, I have my luckily my mother. My mother was here today, man. You know, she went to see Ingleberg Humperdinck the other day. I was I thought that was hilarious. Ingleberg Humperdinck. One of the worst names you'll ever hear. 
And apparently he lost his voice like halfway through the songs, like halfway through the night. I'm like, yeah, he's like 87. He's 87 years old. Alexa, how old is Engelberg Humperdinck? Engelberg Humperdinck is 87 years old. 87, yeah. 87. Engelberg Hunker, hum, hum, Humper fucking fuck. Can't even say his name right. Because it's so fucking crazy. That was definitely not his real name either, by the way. I loved watching that knuckleball from uh, from Wakefield. He didn't even have like one of the craziest looking knuckleballs. It was hard to really. It was like deceptive. Like there, there are some knuckleballs that always that, like look crazy, but then like the those pitchers never make it because they don't consistent enough. But Wakefield's Wakefield had this weird, slow, heavy, just like bizarre knuckleball that was very casual in the way it moved, but deceptively casual. That's what I think made it so devastating. It looked like a curveball maybe, but it never was. It would always veer off somewhere else and it was it w- but it wasn't as flashy as some other knuckleballs but it really was one of the best he's, he's the most got to be the most or one of the most ever or will be one of the most or the most just sort of consistent knuckleballs ever I'd be throw you know you throw a sixty mile an hour just knuckleball. And then once in a while he'd he'd dial up a you know a curveball and a fastball for seventy five miles an hour <laughs> and strike someone out with that. You know? This one looks great though. This one looks really good. Let me see this. Playback speed. This one looks great. Let's let's put this in slow motion. This is from early on and I mean, you would have thought he you would think he had thrown a uh a potato sack. It look it looks like Wakefield throws a potato sack here. Watch this. <laughs> it looks like he threw a potato sack or like a like a just a like a bag a bean bag in that pitch just this gliding weird you know bean bag be on the roster and it was good for the team this is what kind of person is standing right here I love this guy I'm proud of this guy it's the hardest (laughs) it's the hardest thing to do to take yourself out of the game for someone else but he did it and I'm proud of him in 2010 I remember that they just had great a great little video up today about um, Tim Wakefield on Ness and, and just uh, I remember that when he took himself out of the lineup essentially so they could make room for other pitchers um, because they just didn't need a knuckleball it seemed like they, they, and that was the World Series so it was just crazy man um, yeah not looking good Be- Belichick's not looking good Belichick is not looking good right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me play the donations. I've been babbling on about everything. Zach Saber Jr. and uh, Brian Danielson. Danielson in the full Seattle Seahawks gear. 
Aren't they in Seattle? So this is like a big home game for Brian Danielson, right? They are in Seattle tonight, I believe, right? Stephen Wright was not a great knuckleball pitcher. Stephen Wright, I just think of the comedian Stephen Wright. I remember uh, my father hated me. I can't even do Stephen Wright right now, but Mickey and Mallory Knox know the difference between right and wrong. They just don't give a damn. One day I woke up. I can't even do Stephen Wright. He has such a dry speak. I, I, I used to be able to do him. I mean, not sexually, but I used to be able to do him. But not now. He's a Boston guy, too. He's from Boston. Love Stephen Wright. It's my birthday recently for my birthday. My birthday it. recently for my birthday. You have to be, like, really dead. Like you a fire. And a dehumidifier. <laughs> Put them in the same room, let them fight it out. <laughs> it's my birthday recently. For my birthday, I got a humidifier and a dehumidifier. <laughs> Put them in the same room, let them fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> then I filled my humidifier with wax. Now my room's all shiny. <laughs> I went to a museum where they had all the heads and arms from the statues that are in all the other museums. <laughs> like, the guy is, uh, he really, like, <laughs> like, if I could book a show, because, because, like, the same type of comedian, like, over and over again, to me, isn't funny. It's not good to do that. It's, like, good when you mix it up quite a bit. So, like, if I was to put on... And obviously everybody's so different with who people think are good and bad and whatever else. But if I was putting on a stand-up show, I would probably put out like, I don't know, man, like I'm, I'm weird. I would have like, I would have like Stephen Wright, you know, Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, um, uh, Norm MacDonald, and, um, you know, probably obviously a couple others, but it would be just this kind of mix of these different styles. You know, everybody gets, uh, everybody gets 25 minutes or maybe 30 minutes. Everybody gets 30 minutes. It'd be like a four hour comedy spectacular. Uh, the poll is really close. I haven't looked at the poll in a while, but we are up to 143 votes, and it is, the poll is getting, man, it is close. Zach Sabre Jr. stepping on the eyes of Brian Danielson. I would never have paid for this pay-per-view tonight. That's why I didn't, because I wouldn't do it. I mean, you're basically paying to in hopes that Edge is going to show up. That's really it. You know, do you think that that's, I mean, that's me. I, I don't feel, uh, you know, I mean, I just, it's too much money. I'm not excited about anything. And even if I was, I wouldn't pay right now in the world, the way things are in my world, my world. I don't know what world, you know, Tony Khan's a billionaire or whatever, but in my world, uh, we ain't paying for this. You know, my in my world, I would pay for, uh, you know, I would pay for like, you know, 10 bucks, maybe fi maybe 15 bucks. If you told me the show tonight was fifteen ninety nine, I'd probably would buy it. Although I actually couldn't buy it. I actually don't even have 15 bucks. But um, that's different. I'm in a bad spot right now. But, you know, but most people would be able to do it. Most people might do it. I think people would do it. I think you and me and everybody is, you know, I think... On a normal week, you know, I might not have a ton of money, but on a normal week, I would spend 15 bucks on a pay-per-view. Um, you know, maybe even 1999, but when you get to the 50s and the 60s in this time right now in 2023, like, it's really hard to do that. You know, like, it's very hard to do something like that, you know? I, I'm lucky to have a few producers at the $25 producer tier. It's been an okay show, though. 
it's been okay. I, I, I don't, I haven't watched it like closely Right now, I, I still think that the stuff at NXT last night was more, I don't know, it caught me more. I don't know why, but it was more memorable to me right now. I don't know why that is. It's weird because how long, you know, has AEW really dominated over WWE? And, and now it's like, we're here talking about this, about how, you know, is was no mercy better? You know, it's just, it's crazy how things can change, like at the drop, like at the drop of a hat. You know, things can change like this. You know, kind of crazy. Well, the stream went down. Got to find another. We got to find another stream. Zack Sabre Jr. looking like he's hungry for a man, if you know what I mean. He looks like he's hungry for men. I get it. Shout out to Casey. Casey is raw. The Cowboys, dude... I fell asleep because of the Patriots getting their ass kicked so bad today. And today was all I needed to see from Mac Jones to finally be like, you know what? Yep, this guy's not good. He was awful today. Mac Jones was a piece of shit today. He really, really sucked today. Mac Jones was embarrassing today. Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. <laughs> Me, Joe. <laughs> the conspiracy theory will be that Schilling killed him by releasing the news. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, that's what it felt like. Felt like, you know, Schilling said, guess what? He's got brain cancer. And then the next thing you know, he dies the next day. I and mean, it's just crazy. Ugh. Just really shitty uh, timing, news, bad stuff everywhere. We had the we had the Niners blowing it up today. I don't know what the score is now, but we definitely had the 49ers last night, um, crushing it. Let me send it out. There it is. I see you. Oh, man. Zack Sabre Jr. looking like Cody Rhodes, basically. Yeah, the Ravens beat the shit out of the Browns. I had originally been picking the Ravens, and then I switched and went, you know what? The Browns are going to win. Not even close. I think that the res the, the receiving... the um, Who's the receiver? There's a couple receivers on the Ravens that I've been picking the last two weeks because they've really really been kicking ass and you could almost see how they're they're just they're they're starting to explode and they're changing it up a little they're not they're just they're they're mixing the ball up a little bit the Ravens are once again in that top group in the AFC it's it's like the Bills Miami Dolphins uh Ravens Kansas City you know those those are the four and they were last year and they are all there again it seems like But yeah. The get ready for all the kicking and the ninja kicks and stupid stiff shots in this match. I just don't care. I don't care about a guy sitting there and purposely getting kicked. Looks dumb. I hate Brian's kicks. Looks so stupid. Fucking hate it. Yeah. 
And now he's doing the double arm stompy in the face thing. It's like, all right, here comes that thing now. I hate that. Bless everyone who loves it. I like Daniel Bryan, but just Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson. Listen up there, Danielson. Um Ooh, nice roll through there. Oh, look at that bridge pinning combination. I saw Aubrey's tatas. Look at her. Moxley standing up now, looking like he's going to go in the crowd and suck someone off. Wrestle snooze. Is Brian actually hurt? He just keeps clutching himself all night. He's been clutching himself all night like he's, like, wicked hurt. Like, he actually, like, broke his wrist or something. I mean, he's probably just selling it, but it really, like, he's selling it for real, like, pretty, pretty wildly. Zack Sabre Jr. runs in with a drop toe hold. Like, it was... he Like, he, he ran at Brian with that drop toe hold. Alex Wright? I don't think Alex Wright could do any of this stuff, but he does look like a smaller version of him. But wrestling-wise, he reminds me more of Lance Storm, you know? wrestling wise Alex Wright was Alex Wright was kind of weird because he was so big he was actually like right he was like very tall surprisingly very tall Gerald Armstrong thank you for the three dollars Gerald um thank you guys for the donations oh I didn't even put the donation link up I'm sorry guys I'm sorry people you want to use that. Um, if you want to see, the, there's the donation link. I'm sorry. Um, if you want to say something, there's the link. You know, I think it doesn't help when I have the sound off, too. I mean, the sound really low. It looks kind of ridiculous. John Moxley goes, he slapped the taste out of his mouth. And he fucking slapped the brain cells out of his head. I just can't take Brian Danielson serious in that Seattle Seahawks outfit, you know? Just can't do it. So they're still selling Brian Danielson's, you know, wrist. He upper he just uppercutted his injured arm basically. What was the title that Zack Sabre Jr. came out with? Because it looked ridiculous, whatever it was. Looked like he was a Roblox champion or something. Does anybody know what he came out wearing, what that belt was, and what it's from? Forgive my ignorance, but I have no idea. But it did look like, yeah, you're right, Moxley hasn't wrestled, so he can't. he's not bleeding yet because he's not in the match. He's just at ringside on commentary. But, yeah, even you know what would be really funny is if he started bleeding at ringside on commentary. Moxley's not even in a match, and he's bleeding. He's doing commentary with blood just rolling down his face. For no real reason. I think that'd be funny. If, uh, to be honest, if they did something like that, that'd be funny. And they were like, what happened? Well, John Moxley at ringside here doing commentary with us. John, you just hit, you just, you're banging your head and everything around. You just, you just busted yourself open. That'd be funny. Now he just punted the injured wrist, arm, whatever it is of Brian Danielson. Tilt a whirl. Driving. Some kind of a power bomb or gut wrench. 
He's going to contort Daniel Bryan's. No, is Brian going to call him Brian Danielson? I can't stop calling him that. I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me. Want to be WrestleMania? Yeah. Well, I mean, the wrestling, the logo they obviously used is such a, such a WrestleMania type of logo. I mean, this is clearly a ripoff logo of WrestleMania. Well, I'm going to pull the poll down. 55% of you say No Mercy was better. And I think I might switch the poll up with, uh, you know, Will We See Edge tonight? Something like that. We'll find out. Hmm. I like it. Zack Sabre Jr.'s dress for Halloween. You gotta you gotta respect that tonight. Taylor Swift breaks up Kelsey, goes to Zach Wilson. Oh uh, well I'd be more worried that Taylor Swift is gonna ruin his season. You know, like he doesn't have a lot of points tonight. He's already getting distracted with Taylor Swift. Do you know what I mean? Like it's already like kinda like, ew, you know what I mean? Like, he's already getting distracted, like, right now. That's the problem. Oh, here we go. Back to the foot stomps again. Back to the foot stomps again. Well, at least you weren't Cal Alabama coming to see the Red Sox during like a rainstorm, whatever. Juju Gatami. I can't even keep track of all these weird Japanese moves. Because I know all the weird Japanese moves. Busaiku ni. That, sh that should be it, but it won't be. Zack Sabre Jr. is kicking out of the Bisaiku knee kick. Unbelievable. This is what Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson's always wanted, you know? It's like I don't necessarily think that anybody is loving this, but Bryan Danielson certainly is. He's, he's loving it. He's like, oh, yeah, this is what I wanted, but Psycho knee kick too. See you later. Yep, that was it. Took two to beat him. Interesting. The New York Jets have figured it out, Mastodon says. I almost think the New York Jets play to their opponents' levels every game. I'm starting to think that. Yeah, Moxley could never do that in the ring. Now they're gonna they're gonna celebrate like the guys like Eddie Kingston did earlier tonight, and everybody's gonna hug. I mean, is this uh, is this uh, is this the code of honor, ring of honor, or is this AEW? WWE house show last night, six thousand two hundred and twenty four tickets sold. AEW Wrestle Dream pay per view, six thousand tickets sold. A WWE house show. Just outdrew an AEW pay-per-view, according to Julian Weeks, who posted the evidence on Twitter. Call that what you will, I don't know. Where's the house show? That's what I should look at. You know, I'm so sick of the term run it back. I hate that term. 
I don't know why, but when it, someone says run it back, I want to run them over. I don't know. Run it back. Fuck you. How about I take a shovel and bash my own head in? Okay, there's Seattle, Washington. So we have that right. This is San Francisco. Okay, so they're both not really great markets. Like, So that's interesting. But, I mean, WWE should beat them, I guess, you know, because, I mean, they're WWE, even a, even a house show. You would think that you would think the company with two you think the company with at least three million here or there active viewers in the US at least would would be the company that has about a million active viewers. You know, you would think that. So like it's not like I get this you know, comparison and what the guy was doing, but it's like it's not exactly like it's the most gotcha moment or gotcha thing, like, oh my god. We got gotcha. you. You know, because I get it. Well, Sammy Guevara is up next, it looks like. Why would they be putting on uh, Christian last if it wasn't for the edge thing? I mean, you know, we really got to... That's, if that's last, I mean, come on. I might not have done that to keep it less obvious, but then again, well, how else would you do it, you know? Don Callis family going for the Bobby the Brain Heenan family. What up, Sloth? Guys, hit that like button. We're approaching 69 likes, and we really need 69 likes, guys. We're so close to 69 likes. We got to get there. We got to get there, chat. We're so close. Thanks to Jeffrey, Mysterious Black Vintage, everybody that's here tonight. Thank you guys for uh, hanging out. I do have to, uh, you know, it's a big day tomorrow. Here's the Ocho Chris Jericho. Does Jericho really have to call himself the Ocho at this point? Like, we really got to be doing that? The Ocho? The Gocho? Call himself the Gocho? That's pretty funny. Um. Yeah. Interesting. I'm sure it was Tony. Danger. My life was in danger. Sure it was. Keep on playing your video games, stinky ass boy. You know why I call my kids fuck trophies, right? Nobody does. All right, we gotta switch server. The Ocho's in the ring, though. Chris Jericho's in the ring. He can team up with Edge. Here comes Kenny Omega. Beautiful, just oh man, Kenny Omega's beautiful, beautiful music. His beautiful entrance music. Just beautiful entrance music. It is 20 to 20, and all they do is talk about Taylor Swift in the crowd. That's all. They, they keep sh taking a shot. You thought they went to Giselle Bunchen or whatever her name is when Tom Brady was the quarterback a lot? Dude, they can't stop going to shots of Taylor Swift watching the game. Like, they're obsessed. Can you imagine the viewership of women that are watching just to see her? Like, and the ratings are going to go up by her just being there? Oh, they, they, they so hope that... Her and Kelsey date for like five years or for longer or get married. Like, they, like they're just – the ratings have got to be all the way up. Because some, some girl walking by like doesn't watch football and she's like, Dad's watching football. Is that Taylor Swift? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. What is she doing there? Did she sing at the show? 
at the game or whatever it's called. <laughs> no, she's dating one of the players. Oh, I got to go look this up. And they're just like creaming themselves because she's there. And the ratings are going up and up and up and up and up. Well, I I think my prediction in this game was I think I said Jets. If I if I recall, I I, th- I think I said Jets, like seventeen to t- or twenty four, something like that. Maybe seventeen Jets, and then the the Kansas City Chiefs thirty eight. I think I said. I can't be a hundred percent right now, but I, I, we can find the clip of me from yesterday saying it. Pretty sure that's what I said. We'll have to find it. Let's find the clip. Fuck it. Forget exactly what I said, but... It was something along those lines. It was... Uh, I monetized this last night when we were doing the bra- the uh, predictions for the NFL. Let's see. Can't believe we had Trump and RFK on the show yesterday. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, leading the here it is. Uh, <laughs> we the views there. Um, you, I think the Chiefs win this one. Yeah. Joe, do you have any any yeah. comments? Yeah. Oh, I got something to say about this one. Jets Jets uh Jets Suck. uh 17, Jets 17. Okay. Um and the Chiefs, I'm going to say they're going to blow it up, dude. So Chiefs uh like 38, Chiefs 38 and the Jets 17. This is going to be a full-blown just romp or stomp on the Jets. I agree with you to the point where I think that Kansas City got is going to get jealous of what Miami did, and they're going to try to run up the score. Mm. So I think they're going to try to get like fifty points. I think it's yeah. going to be like fifty to twenty. It's not going to be a pretty. Well, I th- see. I think the reason why they won't and they'll get thirty something instead of fifty. I think the reason why is because I think the Jets' defense are going to make a couple plays. Maybe it's early or maybe at some point. But at some point, they're going to stall the Kansas offense. But it's going to be like the Kansas offense just explodes all of a sudden. They're going to just come out. But for at some point, you know, Jets, early, especially early on, the Jets are going to be able to, like, hold them a little bit. And, by the way, are they are they in Kansas or city? It looks like yeah. New York. Yeah, they're, they're in New York. Okay, they're in New or York. New so, so they'll do a better job. So I think that it won't be until, like, the middle of the second quarter that the Kansas City uh, Chiefs will just start exploding. They'll they'll score they'll score ten points, but halfway through the second or a little more than halfway through the second quarter, that's when the Chiefs will just explode. They'll score like two more touchdowns. They'll be at twenty something going into the half with the Jets at like seven or ten, and you know then they'll score a couple more touchdowns in the second half and they'll go home. That'll be it. Yeah, the Jets offense. Well, if that's what I said, but it so if that's the case, we're a little behind here because Kansas City Chiefs are 20, the Jets are 20, and now the Kansas City Chiefs are punting and it's coming towards the end of the third. And this game is starting to shape up to be more of a uh you know 30 33 or 32 to 28 you know down to the wire 
type of game. So, I don't know. We'll see, man. But unless the Kansas City Chiefs do score two more touchdowns ahead of the Jets, then my prediction kind of looks true. But right now it's looking more like a grinder. We'll see what happens. But, yeah, we'll, we'll find out, man. I just know that – but I'll, I'll tell you, bro. That Patriots game earlier was like watching AIDS happen. It was like watching AIDS happen to my best friend. You know, like, like, uh, like, I uh, like some guy s- whispers to me in my ear and says, hey, guess what, man? I'm going to F your friend. And then I'm like, my friend's not gay, though. My my friend's, uh, you know, he's into women and, and stuff. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, that way. But my friend is straight. I don't know what you're talking about. It's like, well, guess what? Not only am I going to have sex with him, but I've got AIDS. And I'll be like, well, he's never going to bang you because he's not into gay guys and he's not into AIDS. I mean, women can have AIDS. You know, he, you get AIDS from a straight person, too. That's a stigma. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to give it to him. Okay. And I'm not going to tell him I have it. And then there's nothing I can do about it. And then this guy literally just pumps into my friend over and over again against his will, you know, on a date. And I and I'm forced to watch it. That's exactly what the Patriots game was like earlier. And I know what you're thinking out there. You're like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? How, what do you mean that's exactly like that?" Shut up. Okay. Relatable. You're damn right it is. We can all relate to the, what I just said, right? So let's not pretend we can't relate to what I just said, because we certainly can. Um. Thank you for the uh, donations. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Kelsey's jersey sales went up 400%. Whoa. There's going to be there's going to be other football players all over the league that are just like begging Taylor Swift to date them so their jerseys. Can you can, like can you imagine the girls, all the girls out there? Like the women out there, the Taylor Swift fans like naked putting on the Kelsey jersey to masturbate in the jersey. Oh my god, can you imagine it? Oh. It's going on, I'm telling you. It's going on, I'm telling you. It's happening. Jericho just chopped the shit out of uh, what's his face, the English guy. Thank you, Gerald Armstrong, for the donation, my friend. Gerald Armstrong funding the show. Gerald Armstrong funding the show big time. Thank you, brother. Sammy Guevara has been pretty funny on commentary. It's like, yeah, it's illegal. That's why this ref sucks. He's uh, he's actually been pretty funny on commentary. Sammy Guevara for commentary. I mean, we already know his comments on Sasha Banks, you know. I'd rape that woman, you know. Kind of crazy. Omega off the rope. Kick to the back by Take a Shitta. He gets knocked off the apron. Osprey got punched right in the eye right there. Anybody see that? Took a shot right in the eye. 148 votes or 194 votes on the poll now. That's pretty crazy. Got a Donnie Brook going on. You should pump into a woman tonight. Dom MMA. What up, Dom? Well, yeah, you know, if my wife uh my wife gets home early in the morning, maybe I will. You know, maybe I'll pump into her. I don't know. Just pump it up. If the I'll tell you what, if the Jets beat the Kansas City Chiefs, I'm officially con- I I don't know what the Jets are this season. They're so erratic. It's very weird. I don't think they can do it, though. This might be their best effort tonight. No matter what happens, it will be their probably their, I think, their best effort. 
What up, Moss Blaze? It's not active, but I do have it. I mean, I know what it, I have it, but it's not active, Moss Blaze. Or, uh, you know, he might, he might, you know, attack me or whatever. He might attack all my stuff like he did. He does with everything else. Pretty much everybody's just waiting on Edge. That's this whole pay per view is about like, is Edge coming? Can you ma we can't, imagine if he didn't come out for some reason? He wasn't there. How funny it would be! Like the, just the amount of people that would just pass away, like tonight, because of that. They'd be like, "Oh my god, that's it! I'm out." Now, some people have said Takeshita has like a really good male parts. I don't know if that's true or not, but, you know, someday we may find out. But right now we don't know. But it has been said that he's got very nice male parts, whatever that means. I mean, I think I know what it means, but, you know. Yeah, it was a rough day, man. Between Wakefield, finding out Tim Wakefield's dead is just sickening to me. And then uh, the Patriots... They just played so terribly, but Mac Jones, I, I saw Mac Jones playing and just went, wow, this guy is fucking trash. He played like a coward, in my opinion, today. I don't know if he realizes he did or not. That quarterback sneak they did where he barely did anything but fall over and didn't even do it right, that was pathetic. Tom Brady did a better job by far a million times over when he did it. And... um so that was just sad and pathetic and that irritated me but then all his throws were just soft and behind and had no zip and just yeah like he really pissed me off today bro when they pulled him out I was screaming I was like it's about fucking time I might have pulled him out a couple of plays before that because it was just so like get him out of this game because he sucks Joe, did you see the Lil Tay rant? The fuck is Lil Tay? Tell me what Lil Tay is and why it's a rant. I'd love to know. I wish Aubrey Edwards would just rip her shirt off. Omega's looking pretty good tonight. Like he's moving faster than he's moved in a while, I feel like. Like he's doing pretty well. Like like mo like movement wise, he looks pretty good. I haven't talked about the Tupac murder stuff because it's just so weird. I want to wait till I find out about more of the facts. But it's definitely a pretty crazy thing. Talked about it yesterday, a couple days ago. I talked about it a couple of days ago quite a bit. Blue Thunder Bomb by to take a shitta. Got a couple of different screens going here. We're watching Wrestle Cream tonight, baby. Good old Wrestle Cream. That's crazy. ECW in 2006 was real ECW. The WWE couldn't have brought it back. ECW in 2006 was real ECW. It was? It Was it really, though? I mean, it really wasn't, right? It, 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 ECW ended in... 
When did ECW really end? Like 1999, 2000? Lil Tay is a five-year-old kid who got famous for flexing stuff within her mom's line of work. The fuck? Why is there a rant for Lil Tay? What's the rant? Not really sure. I didn't see it. I didn't see Lil Tay. Lil Tay, Jesus Christ. Lil Gay. Robert Wilson, that's pretty much what I think. Why does so many care about some little girl? Exactly. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't get it. Seems like, seems like, seems something Pedo Knight would know about. <laughs> Jesus, Pedo Knight. Is that LA, you don't like LA Knight? Why is LA Knight a Pedo Knight? Am I missing something? Is there something I don't know about LA Knight I should know about? Or are you just saying that? There's a Golden Lovers chant at Wrestle Dream right now, which is weird. Now, are they talking about the gold skin of the ja of the Japanese people? Or is that something else? Because I'm worried it's some kind of weird racism, to be honest. Oh, Dork Knight. Yeah, Pedo Knight. Oh, my God. How did I miss that? I'm sorry. Here's Pedo Knight right here. Here he is right here. You know why I call my kids fuck trophies, right? You know why I call my kids fuck trophies, right? Such a weird thing to say. Such a weird, weird thing to say, man. You got to love how crazy that guy is. Mysterious Black is here. Mo words. Alfredo. Stone Rosses. Stone Roses. Lewis Money. Mr. It's All a Work Dork Knight. Yeah. If only he didn't say that. You know, it's not, it's still real to him. Oh my God. Kenny Omega just, hey, you know what? Just break my neck. Kenny Omega's neck is broken, guys. Gaming Geary. Rose through. Oh my God. Another man lands on his head and neck. Obushi just fucking. Just got contorted into a neck broken, like a broken neck. Jesus Christ, bro. That was crazy. That was crazy. Yikes, brother. Whew. That looked rough. That looked rough. Jericho with a hell of a drop kick there. Look at that. Let me back it up real quick and hear what I said while I pee -pees. Let's see what I said. And then once in a while, he'd, he'd dial up a, you know, a curveball and a fastball for 75 miles an hour <laughs> and strike someone out with that. 
you know? This one looks Whoa! great. Whoa! Sammy one Guevara, really what the fuck this. was that? Playback speed. This one looks great. Let's let's put this in slow motion. Wow. This one early on and Sammy Guevara just went nutty, dude. I mean, you would have thought he you would think he had thrown a uh a shooting sack. star sexual sexual chocolate it look, from it the like top rope throws a potato sack here. That was crazy. Watch this. <laughs> it looks like he threw a potato sack. Or like a like a just a like a bag. A bean bag. Yeah, we're listening to me twice because I'm looking for this clip. My bad guy. And Mallory Knox know the difference between right and wrong. They just don't give a damn. One day I woke up. I can't even do Stephen Wright. He has such a dry speak. I, I, I used to be able to do him. I can't find it. I mean, not sexually, but I used to be able to do him. But not now. He's a boss. I will find it eventually. Omar, take it away. Question. I think we've we've entered the pussy era of the NFL. Hence why they stopped this game. I miss the era of the CTE, the concussions, <laughs> the death. And that's what they should go back to. <laughs> Omar. Oh, my oh, God, dude. I mean, <laughs> bring back CTE. Yeah, dude. I mean, bring what what happened to the days back in the day where you put your body and brain on the line and you yeah. end up shooting yourself with a shotgun like Junior Seau? We Why can't we go back to that? God, God bless Aaron Hernandez. Fucking go to And, and to, to, uh, to Omar's point, though, I've always heard people say <laughs> a man end up ends up taking his path on the very road he, he took to avoid it. When the NFL is trying to be all sensitive and pussified, you're going to end up getting somebody killed on accident. Question. I think we've we've entered the pussy era of the NFL, hence why they stopped this game. I miss the era of the CTE, the concussions, <laughs> the death. And that's what they should go back to. <laughs> Omar. Oh my oh, god, dude. I mean, <laughs> bring back CTE. Yeah, dude. I mean, bring what what happened to the days back in the day where you put your body and brain on the line and you yeah. end up shooting yourself with a shotgun like Junior Seau? We Why can't back, we go back to that? God, God bless Aaron Hernandez. Fucking go to and, and to, to, uh, to Omar's point, though, I've always heard people say <laughs> a man end up ends up taking his path on the very road he, he took to avoid it. When the NFL is trying to be all sensitive and pussified, you're going to end up getting somebody killed on accident. Question. I think we've we've entered the pussy era of the NFL. Hence why they stopped this game. I miss the era of the CTE, the concussions, <laughs> the death. And that's what they should go back to. <laughs> Omar. Oh my oh, god, dude. Ago. I mean <laughs> bring back CTE. Yeah, dude. I mean bring what what happened to the days back in the day where you put your body and brain on the line and you yeah. end up shooting yourself with a shotgun like Junior Seau? Why can't back, we go back to that? God God bless Aaron Hernandez. Fucking go and, to, and go to, to uh to Omar's point though, I've always heard people say <laughs> a man end up ends up taking his path on the very road he he took to avoid it. When the NFL is trying to be all sensitive. Yeah, I mean, um, you got to give it to Omar for that savage take, to be honest. I'm back. I had to go grab a drink, and I got my drink now. So here it is. Check on the, the kiddos. Make sure they were sleeping like I thought they might be. And... Where's Edge? Where is he? Is my mic on? There it goes. Now Osprey with a corkscrew. Why does Osprey's back look like a leopard fucked him? What is going on here? 
I got this cup treatment. Did you know that, guys? This special... Oh, man, the Judas effect by Jericho in a super kick! By Guevara! Another one! And now Jericho's going all the way up. He's getting... Uh, what is Aubrey Edwards doing with Osprey? It looks like they're fucking making out in the corner. Aubrey Edwards is making out with Osprey, dude, or something like, dude, did you see that? What the fuck is she doing with him? Are they banging? That's so bizarre. Jericho's got him pinned. Osprey's trying to molest Aubrey Edwards. Wow, Guevara with a just what kind of kickout was that? It was like a nothing kickout. What was that? Is he really hurt or did they like what was that? That was really strange, that kick out. Like that was bizarre. Guevara with Jericho. Again, Aubrey's distracted because she's an idiot. Torture rack. That was that was so weird, dude. Oh, Callus! Callus <laughs> waffled him in the head with a cane and then fell out of the ring. Ah, <laughs> dude, the way Don Callus fell out of the ring—did you see that? That's it. They beat Jericho, dude. Did you see the way that Don Callus fell out of the ring just now? Oh my God, bro! That was so funny, dude. That was so funny, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dude, the way Don Cows fell out of the ring was great. I can't get over that. We're going old school with Moss Blaze. The twenty-nine dollar donation. It's Thanksgiving. Nobody sold anything that entire match, Derek. I know. What are we doing? Some love Joe JCS Army Happy Times Crazy Fellas Fucking Wrestling and Alex Jones Drops Love My Time Here With You Joe And You Crazy Bastards In The Chat Blaze It One Time For Your Boy Let's Fucking Go Ooh. Let's Go Baby Moss Blaze The OG Everybody Light It Up For The OG The Legend Moss Blaze Thank You Moss Blaze Ah, thank you a lot, bro. That was really cool. The donation drop from Moss Blaze. And it was a direct Streamlabs one. Yay, I have gas money. 
The Jets now 20, the Kansas City Chiefs 23. Derek Hans in the chat at this rate, it's going to take a shotgun blast to someone's face for a three count. Yeah, that's what it kind of feels like, huh? It's kind of like you just you, you, you keep going this way. It's like eventually what are you going to get to? You know, where are you going to be eventually if you keep pushing this envelope? I mean, I guess you'll be, um, I don't know, you'll be UFC or something. Oh, go herd or go go Bobard or whatever her name is. She give a hand job to somebody. Is that seriously? Man, she can give a hand job to me. Zach Wilson looking better than Mac Jones to, right now. Like, what the fuck's going on? Jungle Boy, he looked at me like a father figure. He sure did. But here's the thing, Jungle Boy. I never wanted to be your father. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father. Yo, but your father's dead. But your father's dead. Are you gonna introduce me to your little friend, Nick Wayne? I understand that you have a father. Ordo also had a father. <laughs> that is killing me, man. All right, we gotta. Now we got a tag team match that could go on, man. We may never get to sleep tonight. I got to get up early, bro, for work. Like, this shit can't go on forever. I thought we were getting to the fucking main event already. Like, is this wrestle? Is this dream ever going to end? This dream is turning into a fucking nightmare, to be honest, right now. Like, there's really a tag team match happening now. Nick Wayne's mom is hot. Shout out to Moss Blaze for that 29, man. You know, we'll put him up on the board. We'll put Ma Moss Blaze up here. $29 Moss Blaze. It's a dream to get sleep tonight, yeah. I'm super tired. It's been a really weird day. Put Moss Blaze up there. We'll put Wrestle Dream over here. He's the Ferrari to Mark Davis's tank. What the hell? This is a downgrade for Edge. Mac Jones to the Arena League. I think it's been a pretty good show too. I think the show would be better if I wasn't so tired. I think that's I think that's a major uh, bias that I have right now. I think being very tired, knowing I have to get up early for work, having a really bad day, you know. I think that's hindering my fun of the event. I think other people who are in a good place right now who are enjoying the night really a lot and Maybe they don't have much to do. Like, I think some people, I think if that's your case, you might be having a great time with this show, you know? And that, so that's understandable. But I think, uh, anybody who's not exactly happy with the world right now is, <laughs> or, or they're tired. My brain is killing me. My, my sinuses are full. My face hurts. My head hurts. Oh, my God, bro. I I just hope this match is not long because I don't give a shit about what happens in this match. I can tell you that right now. And this guy probably didn't even bring a gun to the match. Mac Jones back to Alabama. It's a full moon, harvest moon. I didn't even know that. What a great game Har Harvest Moon was. How many people played Harvest Moon? What a game. 
I only played it a little bit. I just know that my wife and my my kid really enjoyed it, and I I, I was like, this is a good game. Imagine Velveteen Dream shows up tonight and he creams on everybody in the front row who seems like they might be under 30. Yeah, the the placing of the matches, Ivan, really has got to tell you that we're getting edge tonight. Mostly it's the places, the placement, um, the placement of the matches, you know? Wrestle snooze fest. Imagine the wrestle, the velveteen, the velveteen toilet cam. And now we go live to the velveteen toilet cam. I I had by by now I had Kansas City, I had Kansas City Chiefs uh, beating uh, the Jets, seventeen to thirty eight. Right now it's 23 to 20. So that prediction so far is not looking like it's uh, going to happen, but it, it still could, I suppose. Oh, man, what a chop. The other night on Monetize This, we had, uh, fuck, we had RFK, we had Trump on the show. I mean, we had a lot of people uh, on the show. No, that was from the other night. Um, yeah, RFK was wild. And we had Trump on the show, too. It was quite the group of people. Listen to this. I can't find it. There we go. I got it. Probably going to be right about that. And My I bad. mean, you're a big, I'm assuming still that you're a Patriots fan, uh, Robert, because obviously Robert F. Kennedy, let's see if RFK was wrong about the Patriots game today. I mean, you got to be a Patriots fan, right? Or, or, or how you, have you moved on to a different team? I mean, the family being from Massachusetts. Uh, obviously, Joe, I, I'm going to be a Patriots fan for life. As long as I'm on this God green screen. I'm gonna be a Patriots fan, with Brady or not. Right, right, yeah. And so, do you think Mac Jones really took a cheap shot last week, or do you think, you know, that he's just being competitive? I mean, he's getting his kind of getting his ass kicked a little bit out there. The thing, Joe, the thing is, Mac Jones is a young man. <laughs> he's a young guy, a young buck, not the young bucks from AWE or whatever it's called. Uh, he, he wants to be competitive against these these other teams, and, and he he just he wants to win. But now, he, he ain't. Got I don't I don't know if you guys caught it, but last night this guy that was doing these imitations, he like learned how to do Dan Kennedy in like five minutes, and he was doing Dan Kennedy. It was fucking hilarious. I'm like, this guy did Dan Kennedy. He did Trump. He did uh, RFK. I mean, like, it was crazy. No one should be paying that amount of money for a pay-per-view. It, it is crazy. No one should do that. <laughs> I wrote in the chat, I went, yeah, I'm not paying for this pay-per-view. Not a chance. No one should be paying that amount of money for a pay-per-view. It, it is crazy. No one should do that. I thought that was funny. He was cracking me up last night. WWE can't pull this amazing stuff. And throws him into the ropes, off the ropes, into a back suplex power bomb. Luckily, he kicked out. 
Uh, we did pass the 69 like mark, which is good for us. That's nice. Very nice. If you're brand new to the channel, hope you subscribe. If you want, super chats are, are available to be super chatted. I want to hear uh, your comments about whatever you want. And the memberships are open if you want to become a member down below. Or Streamlabs link is pinned to the top. You can use PayPal via Streamlabs or Stream Elements in the description box down below, which is better for credit cards. All that stuff, there's a way to drop a dono on the show and say stuff and get you on here if, there, if you really want to. There's a way to do it. Everybody else has been clicking that like button. We're on our way to 100 likes now instead of 69. We got uh, Taylor Swift. Imagine she flashes the camera in the uh, Kansas City Jets game. She flashes the camera just so we see some Taylor tits. That'd be nice. Why can't that happen? Oh, yeah. Taylor Swift. What up, Lord Cosmo? Oh, my God. That did not look right. Whatever they just did in the turnbuckle. That did not look right. Uh, Stone Rose says, I paid $50 for WrestleMania 17, which is the greatest pay-per-view of all time. Why would I pay $60 for this? That's a great point. Great point. Man, wasn't WrestleMania like 100 bucks at that point, or was it maybe it was a little bit after that? Remember when WrestleMania was $100? Then, then a couple of years it was $111. Do you remember that? We were like, holy shit. I think the la the last year... The year before the network, before they streamed on the network or whatever, I want to say one of the last years for WrestleMania, WrestleMania was like $111. It was fucked, dude. That was crazy. You know, and like UFC events were that or something, or boxing events were that. Maybe UFC is like $69.99 or something. But I, I just remember one WrestleMania, it being $111. And at the time, I was doing really well on YouTube, or I was doing pretty well on YouTube. And I really like, I, I love buying the pay per view because when you buy a pay per view on cable, it looks so beautiful. No, no streaming app can l look that good. It doesn't matter. It's not possible. If you watch a streaming app, any streaming app, it's it's it doesn't look anywhere near a pay per view quality on a cable built on a cable company box. So it just doesn't come close. The the shutter speed is not, it's all a whole different thing. It's not even close. So I, I'm like, I'm willing to pay that. It, you know what I mean? Now, now I can't pay that. So I wouldn't do it. I never would do it. But back then when I was like doing really well, I didn't have a ton of bills. Oh yeah. I buy it. A, absolutely. Like if I, if I had $5,000, if I, if I had like five or six or seven or $8,000 in my bank account, I would do it. I'd buy it because it's worth it. It looks that good on TV. I would want it to see it that way. So I, I would do it for WrestleMania. But I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it now. And in fact, I don't think I have bought WrestleMania in five years now. I think it's. I think it's been four, 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 maybe three or four years actually. Two thousand. Yeah, two thousand nineteen. I think was the last year I bought it on pay per view. And that's just out of mostly money. I mean, there's convenience because I have the Xbox right here and I can watch it while I'm doing all this stuff, but that's part of it too. But, you know. Uh oh, the video's blocked and I can't find another stream. No. What the fuck happened? Ah, fuck. What happened? Fuck. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, there it goes. I think it's back. Wrestle stream. <laughs> That's what I should change my wrestling channel to. Call myself Wrestling Stream or Wrestle Stream. Watch it. Watch me now tonight live on Wrestle Stream. Uh.
Don Stevens, that's what happened. Chief Wahoo, good point. Don Stevens got him again. But you know what? Don Stevens hasn't gotten my 87th uh, stream that I've clicked on to watch. So Don Stevens got to do a little more uh, digging. And the Chiefs with the ball. They run it to the... 12 yard line with two minutes and 38 seconds left. The Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Cheats run the ball to about the 12 of the Jets in red zone territory. It's been a hard grind here tonight for the Chiefs against a struggling and desperate Jets team. But Pacheco gets through until he's finally wrapped up at about the 12. Isaiah Pacheco, 116 rushing yards, 43 reception yards. Unbelievable stuff from him tonight. If you had him in fantasy, it was a the right call, a one and a two for Dax and a two and a half. It's unbelievable, guys. Kansas City, the Jets, big stuff on the line here. Motion, Mahomes, the handoff. And Pacheco's knocked down behind the line by about a yard. And the Chiefs will lose about a yard on that play. That's fourth down, and now they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt, potentially. Andy Reid looking through his porno magazines on the sideline. I'm looking at the guy's ass on AEW right now. That's weird. The electric chair up top and a big kick. Who are these guys that they're wrestling? The leprechauns? Oh, no, it's second and ten. I'm sorry. It's not fourth down. Kansas City won't have to settle for a field goal. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm wa Well, I know what I'm thinking. I'm watching two different things right now. But, yeah, the Chiefs. They got they got second and ten. They lost a yard a play ago, or they I thought they lost a yard. I guess they got back. Second and ten. Big pop shot. And they pick up about three yards there. Third and seven. Third and seven. Kansas City Chiefs. Third and seven. Red zone. Jets are tough. Uh Kelsey's looking up. I bet you he's looking for Taylor Swift right now. Kelsey's looking up. He's got to be looking. Oh, my goodness. On the wrestling show on AEW WrestleDream, did you see that? He creamed Dax Harwood onto his partner. It's getting crazy. Shout out to the Monetize This champion, Luke Rojas. Shout out to him. A lot of stuff going on right now on both screens because I'm watching I'm watching a lot of things here, you know. A lot of things going on. God damn. Luke is one of the sexiest monetize this champions we've ever had. Wheeler just got double clothesline front and back of his head. And he deserves it. Oh, they just fell and rolled and threw. What, what just happened? What was that about? Dude, that was really weird. Whatever just happened. They just did the shatter machine, but it didn't look very good. This is a wrestle nightmare, as we've said multiple times throughout the night tonight.
That was just a weird... That was a bad shatter machine. That was a shitter machine. They did the shitter machine on that one. That was the shitter machine, bro. Unbelievably terrible. Jesus. Oh, spike pile driver on the outside apron. Daddy got hurt. I enjoyed it. And first and goal for the Kansas City Chiefs with 1 minute and 40 seconds left. That's going to end the game. They're going to have the full control of the clock. Mahomes dashes to his left with plenty of room. And then slides down inbounds to basically be able to run out the clock. And Dax Hardwood, a pin, and FTR gets the victory. And Kansas City Chiefs will get the victory barely over the New York Jets, 23-20. to 20. What a crazy, a weird, weird, just a weird football game tonight. Man, it was a it was a gallant effort by uh by the Jets. You got to really give it to them for that. You got to I mean they they really it's amazing that they hung in that they were in this game like that. But even the even the Patriots have been in a couple of games. It's weird. Everybody is so close. The Jets coach is losing it on the ref. I don't know what's up with that, but I don't know what happened. Unsportsman. <laughs> Unsportsman like on the New York coach. You don't see that a lot. Oh, there was a call earlier that I missed. The New York Jets head coach. It's half a distance to the goal line. We're going to wind the clock and the game's going to be over. Yeah, you got to give it to the Jets, though. They they really did. Um, they really battled. Do you know what I mean? Like, they battled to try to win that game tonight. They, they almost beat. A, uh, they almost beat the possible one of the best teams in the NFL right now you know the top four best team in the NFL they almost beat them tonight so it was close so you could see why they'd be upset one little call one little thing you know, this way or the other would uh, I'm sure incense the coach I didn't see that thing because I wasn't watching the whole game intently I was obviously watching a lot of AEW as well which this AEW Wrestle Dream may just never end. This this dream is certainly turned into a nightmare at this point uh, tonight. But we're still going as Wrestle Dream continues, anticipating potentially that we might see Edge. Imagine if it's Lita and Edge together. <laughs> oh my God, bro! I don't know. Lita and Edge are back together. Rebby would be fucking. Waiting for Matt. Let's see. Uh, the other day. Oh. <laughs> oh, so I know it. Super chat party from uh, Keith Jackson. What up, Keith? Good to hear from you, bro. Keith Jackson. You beast. 
All right, here comes uh, here comes Christian Cage. Here we go, guys. Here comes Christian Cage, the TNT champion, with uh, Luchasaurus. And you know what's weird is Luchasaurus is staying in the back. So Christian Cage is coming out, and uh, Luchasaurus was sent to the back. That's kind of crazy. This is the moment that everybody's been waiting for tonight, that they've been here for the entire night. Christian Cage coming out, the TNT championship on the line. Is this is this it? This guys in the chat, can you let me know this is the main event? Because if this is the main event, there's got to be something that tells you right there, right? But it uh, it's got to be. Is this the main event? But the, I would think so. So it it would be edge time, yeah. Hmm. Look at Darby Allen. Darby Allen, where'd you get that coat? Like 17 dead sheep. Darby Allen wearing a sheep coat out there. Why is Darby Allen destroying his skateboard? Did he come out and dive over his skateboard all weird, too, by the way? That was kind of bizarre. Tony can't wait for the media scrum. Yeah, can you imagine? Can you imagine Tony Khan right now? That's all he cares about. He's just like, please let the media scrum. Ah, ah, media scrum. He's like doing coke, jerking off, doing coke, getting ready. This is the main event, yeah. So this is totally something's up. It's so weird. Mm. Two out of three. Oh, we got a frozen screen. Frozen screen. Up. Oh. Frozen screen. All right. AW loves four hour pay per views. I think they they love five hour pay per views. I can't imagine that that they would bring Edge in as a heel. So I would think, because he's going to be cheered so much. So if anything, don't you think that they would bring Edge in to help? Like like Luchasaurus is going to come out later, right? And now it's Luchasaurus and, and Christian, and there's no Sting, right? Because where's Sting, right? Is there no Sting? So if there's no Sting, then he's going to need Edge maybe, and then Edge is going to face Christian, I mean, a lot of us talked about how we thought maybe it was going to be Edge. It's just such a, it's, oh man, I can't wait to see Tony Khan in this scrum later. He's just going to be such a shit. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a, I'll take a question. Uh, go ahead, Sean Ross Sapp. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ask a question. Oh, we really did. We really did, John. Yeah. Th thank you for asking that, too. I really appreciate that. Ah, ah, ah. 
Ah! That's going to be Tony later. Just fucking out of his mind. And then and then Edge is going to come sit on his lap. And he's going to be like, oh, thank God. Edge is sitting on my lap, yes. <laughs> Coked up out of his mind. Darby Allen is looking like a like a trafficked boy from Las Vegas circa 1986. Mm. Christian is so bizarrely dressed for wrestling. Like he's got these black pants on, black shoes on, the black like weird like like black collar shirt but cut off. Like I don't know why but Christian is just dressed so weirdly. He's I mean he's dressed like Diamond Dallas Page from when he wrestled Diamond Dallas Page at WrestleMania. Hmm. Aesthetic Delta says uh, gets no he's no WCW DDP Darby definitely on the spectrum. Jesus Christ, Lewis Money. Darby on the spectrum. Um, I didn't see the play that happened with the Jets that the, that the coach was upset about, so I can't say. I don't know. I didn't see. You know, it only takes one play to be kind of screwed up by the refs, and when you're an underdog team, you know, it can really piss you off. So I can see why he's mad. You know. Darby definitely on the spectrum. Dahmer and Darby's role model. Darby reminds me of that kid that said I like turtles. Yeah, I think that a lot of people a lot of people put that meme up of Dar next to Darby. I've been doing it for years to be honest. He like got the same look exactly. It's it's been funny. A coked up personality. Probably gonna be Jack Perry. That's true. So so maybe Jack Perry will come out to help somebody, yeah. Look at Christian's arms. You know, Christian Christian looks like a smaller guy, man, but he got some big arms compared to a lot of the guys nowadays. You know? Christian's a tall dude compared to a lot of people now. I remember when I went to uh, the South Shore Music Circus to see uh, WWE, 
The last time I saw it at the South Shore Music Circus, Edge was in the main event. He was the ECW champion. And uh, Leah was pregnant. Wow, Darby Allen got the first victory, the first fall. He pulled the shirt over the face of Christian. That was hilarious. It's so weird that he has a turtleneck on while he's wrestling. It's so bizarre. So it's uh, one fall now. I could never, I, mean, I just can't in, in this day and age imagine paying for this pay-per-view right now. Uh, let's see who's the top uh, most blaze with the $29 donation of the top donation. Just want to give a shout out to everybody who's, uh, you know, makes me think about still wanting to cover AEW a little bit. Uh, and that is Keith Jackson with the dollar 49 Moss blaze with the 29 bucks, Gerald Armstrong with the three bucks, uh, multiple times chief Wahoo with the five Pacharo. And um, Gerald Armstrong dropped uh, several donos. Thank you to Gerald Armstrong. Thank you guys for making it worth it. Thank you guys for that. So that's... Um, Not worth 50. Yeah, I just can't I can't justify paying that for this in this in at this time, you know what I mean? Like if I was doing fairly well or like decent, I I'd probably buy it, but right now I just no. Like I said earlier tonight, I mean, you know, make it 15 bucks, I would have paid for it. Well, I, not right now I wouldn't have, but I would say that you should probably try to pay for it if you really like the product. For 15 bucks, you probably should try to pay for it. But, you know, 60 bucks, this type of thing. Get the fuck out of here. It's crazy. I thought AEW struck a deal with HBO Max for pay-per-views. I'm not sure yet. I, I mean, I heard about that, but I'm not 100% sure. I had a really bad day today, man. Between uh, Tim Wakefield passing away, that was such sad, sick news. Dude, I'm sick to my stomach. And uh, the Patriots just absolutely fucking sucking earlier. Like, that was retarded. I kind of thought that you know, the Cowboys are going to win. Pretty much thought Cowboys are winning, but I did not expect, you know, Mac Jones to play like a fucking retarded person. God damn, man. But hey, the, the Kansas City Chiefs just got out of it, you know? How did everybody else... Uh, how did all your football teams do today? Darby Allen sends Edge, I mean Christian, <laughs> over the top rope. Woo! Look at that. Splash, nobody there. Darby. Wow, how was that not a three? That was a long two on a code red. O'Connor roll. Springboard off the first rope. That was pretty cool. Darby doing a lot of the work here to help Christian. Crucifix. Like that too. And then Darby comes at him and he just grabs him by the hips and chucks him through the middle ropes. That was great. Giants play tomorrow. Jags won. Uh, yeah, how about the how about the Jaguars earlier? Remember I said I wouldn't touch that game with a ten foot pole? London, England, Jaguars, not touching it. 
Not predicting, not going to bet on that shit whatsoever. And the Jags uh, ended up beating the shit out of them. The Falcons didn't fly well to London. Stoned Mexican says, I don't watch football. I don't like watching a bunch of people who weren't slaves cry about being slaves and take a knee during the national anthem. Jesus. Well, that's so like three years ago, you know, Robert. I mean, uh, Stone Mexican. That's so three years ago, bro. You know, come on. That was a while ago. I don't think they do that anymore. Colin Kaepernick is dying to play. He's like begging to play football again. But di but didn't you say this was slavery? Playing football was like modern day slavery. But now he wants to be a slave again. I, I, you know, it's a very confusing person. I feel like Colin Kaepernick needs to be thrown down a flight of stairs and then beaten with a steel dildo. But that's just me. That's just my opinion. Mac Jones was real trash. Yeah, he was today. He was playing so soft, so soft, that it was weird. Wait a minute, the Jags play again next week? Are you serious? I feel bad for their fans. You got to play two games in England? London? Darby coffin drop into the knees. This is where Christian should probably pick up the second fall of the match. That was a pretty good spot right there to do it. Oh. Oh, my God. I just realized that AEW now has the same table type of stuff that WWE has. That is fucking hilarious. Their announce table is just like the WWE's thing. Joe Jags were home team today, road team next week. You think London's going to care? I didn't watch it because I just couldn't be up, dude. Nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday after I've been up every morning all week for the rest of the week. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Especially not for two teams I don't give a shit about. I woke up to find out what the score was. Christian maneuvering those chairs, those steel steps, like he maneuvers a dead body. The Cowboys needed to win, man. They needed to bounce back after last week. And that's what I was worried about, was that they would do something like they did today. But I, I just, Mac Jones just played really, really terribly for the Patriots. It was... And then the injuries started happening, and when the injuries happened, the, the Patriots couldn't even play right. They're they're a mess. That that decided the season right there. But the Cowboys needed to respond after losing weirdly themselves last week, and uh, they, they poked right in the eyes. It was Darby Allen? Um, so the Cowboys are back to looking like they're supposed to look. Probably a top three team of the NFC. Maybe. But, yeah, I got the 49ers next week, though, still over the Cowboys. I thought he was going to throw him into the steps. He just kind of dumped him onto the floor there, did uh, Christian on Darby. I thought he was going to dump him. Uh... Oh, there he goes. There he goes into the steps. Yikes. Yikes. Whoa. Into the steel steps on the rigid ends of the steps. That didn't look good. That did not look good. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. What the fuck was that, bro? Oh, my God, dude. What the hell? Oh! Oh! 
Jesus Christ, Darby's dead, bro. <clears throat> Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, my God. Well, there's uh, the fall. There's the second fall. Fall number two. Bro, that sounded crazy. Get, I'd be like, get him in the ring. I get to do the third fall here. Holy shit, bro. Relax one minute. I'd be like, bro, I win. I win the match. This is crazy. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, bro. It was like a fucking tombstone into the steps. Now they're calling what the ambulance. I'd be like, I win then. Dude, that's like almost as crazy as somehow the hell in a cell spot w without jumping off a roof of a cell somehow. Darby Allen was just thrown into the rigid ends of steel steps like horrifically. It looked like one of the cra like craziest things I've seen. And now Ed and now Christian is up. Uh Oh, no, it's uh, one fall each, right? Guys, what's the score in the chat? What's the falls? It's one-to-one, one, right? I think it's one-to-one one Christian. And now, while they're stretching Darby Allen away, apparently they're going to stretch him out of the arena. And Christian is ripping the ring padding up in the ring to expose the wood. But meanwhile, the officials are trying to take Darby Allen away. But I'd be like, well, what's the point in ripping up the ring then? Do I win? He's going to the hospital. Like, what's going on? The ring is exposed now. The match is over is what the commentary team is saying. Christian's now climbing to the top rope. Oh, my God. Christian just frog splashed Darby. It almost felt like he thought he was going to break or flip over the... Oh, my God. He splashed Darby off the top rope. And it was almost like he thought the the stretcher was going to break when he landed on it, but it didn't. And he just got waffled in the sternum. Holy shit. That was crazy. Why is Nick Wayne's mom there? Can someone explain this? I don't know. Oh, I know why. Cause yeah, he's been beating him up and stuff recently. I get it. I don't know why. This shit's crazy. This is fucking hilarious. Now they're both in the ring, which isn't, which has all the woods exposed. Exposed wood planks. Oh, bro. He hit the kill switch on the wood. I will knock you out. Look at the wood. The exposed ring. Tell you what, though, they got some good wood for the AW ring.
<laughs> oh my god, bro. This is crazy. It would be funny if there was no edge. <laughs> that would be funny. Imagine that, dude. That'd be the first question they asked Tony Khan. Oh, my God. Darby, you got to be careful not to hit the back of your head on the exposed wood. Scorpion Deathlock. This is funny. Don't you're gonna get a big sliver right in your face on that wood like that. I love the Darby's in the main event though. Regardless of the reason why this is happening and Darby's in the main event. I love the Darby's in the main event, man, because he's a guy that is homegrown from this company and, and he's still there and he's great. And it's just he deserves to be there. He's been so good for them and, and a character that they've really sort of, you know, embraced slash emphasized since day one. Darby Allen is really, to me, the darling of AEW at this point. And so I like this. I love the coffin drop too, by the way. It's like one of my favorite things when he hits it. Coffin drops great. Up, oh, Darby's going up for the coffin. Dude, he's going to miss the coffin drop on the exposed wood. Oh, my God. He did the coffin drop on Christian's fucking head. And Christian kicked out. See, what's it going to take, bro? He just hit his finishing move on fucking plot on the goddamn on the wood. He nailed him with the coffin drop on the wood on his face. And Christian kicked out of that. That's fucking crazy. Derek Hans, yes, it's the main event. Holy shit, bro, dude. And Darby just landed on his nuts. Holy shit, my God, man. Now Christian's going up on the outside. Oh, my God, bro. Those steps are still out there, bro. What are we seeing right now? What are we seeing right now? The steps are still outside. They're climbing on top of the ring. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The power bomb under the exposed wood. Dude, this has been the best thing of the entire night, no doubt. Oh, my God. Christian speared the referee. What's the score on the falls, guys? Does anybody know? Oh, Christian low blowed Darby after he speared the referee. <laughs> that look, this is this is played really well, guys. I gotta tell you. This has played well. That was crazy. Why is the Nick Wayne mom there? Like, is Nick going to show up and then he's going to get beat up? Here's Nick Wayne. He took the belt from Christian. Why is Christian always beating up young guys and their mommies and families? It's really weird. Now Christian's chasing Nick Wayne around. Around? Around? <laughs> If you guys want to donate, the link is pinned to the top of the chat. If you guys want to support me in this channel, do it. It's up there. Or, of course, you can super chat as well. Oh, Nick Wayne hit Darby Allen. What is going on? Why is Nick Wayne's mother surprised about this? What is happening? This is so bizarre, bro. 
Why is there a lady with a headset on talking to Nick Wayne's mom? Dude, they're all going to have uh, slivers after this. Okay, Ed's just won. Ed's just won. I mean, Christian just won. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, everybody. Christian just retained the TNT championship. What is Nick Wayne? What is going on? Can you imagine there's no edge, guys? Because this doesn't seem like how you would set that up. It seems like how you'd set up a turn for Nick Wayne. I think I think Christian might be a pedo and he's looking for the youngest talent. It's very strange. Damn, Darby looks fucking wrecked right now. That match was great. I'll say that. That match was great. Well done. And now they're beating up Darby Allen. Oh, my God. Nick Wayne slapped the shit out of him. Wow, they're really beating the shit out of... This is really good. Nick Wayne's like 18. They're beating Darby up in the middle of the ring. Now you just need Luchasaurus. Edge is definitely coming out, by the way. Somebody's definitely coming out. Oh, it's Sting. Here comes Sting. But now where's Luchasaurus now? There's going to be a big, crazy fucking ending here. Whoa. Met Wakefield in 91 as a Pirates minor league RIP. Oh, I thought maybe Sting would turn on Darby. Mr. Pico Boulevard. Uh, oh, yes, I remember he was a Pirate first before Red Sox. So, Mr. Pico, thank you for the $2, man. Love Wakefield. Thank you, Pico. <clears throat> oh! Wouldn't have been good if Sting turned on him, too. Now Sting's going at Luchasaurus. We're setting up. It's a three on two, though. They're really pouring on this whole thing I hope my stream doesn't go out at the right the worst time the ring is just destroyed by Luchasaurus got the big daddy cool diesel pants on by the way everybody that hasn't noticed that Mr. Pico, thanks for the donation. Now it's three on one on Sting. Getting ready for it. Getting ready for it. Where's the lights out? Oh, my stream went down. My stream went down. Oh, the lights went out. Here he comes. Here it comes! And the stream goes down again! They got Pyro going off. Can you imagine the lights go out and we have to watch like a movie trailer for somebody? Like it's a little too, you know, ridiculous, right? Why would that play? You know what I mean? Why would that play? It's so stupid. 
Holy shit! He's got his music! Oh my god! He's got his music! I had no idea that this was owned by Edge! Holy shit! That's crazy! And they've got Pyro! You would think he was in WWE right now! Wow! Edge is all elite! What kind of money did Tony Khan pay to have Edge show up in AEW? But whose side is he on? That was crazy. Edge is here. Edge has the chair. This is their really teasing who he's whose side is he going to be on? And he's going after Christian and Nick Wayne and a spear on Luchasaurus. W. Oh my god, Edge just speared 18-year-old Nick Wayne. Holy shit. We're going to have a big edge in Christian feud. We talked about the other day we might be a a tag team and uh but it looks like it's going to be a little bit different. Holy shit. Crowds exploding. Man, Darby Allen had the shit beat out of him tonight. Darby Allen had the shit beat out of him tonight. Imagine that Sting, Darby Allen, and Edge all standing in the ring right there. And the stream just shit itself. It's like, oh man, we're I'm fucked up. Holy hell, man. Was that worth staying up tonight? Was that worth being there for all this? And they're going off the air. Four years of dynamite coming up. Holy crap. That was crazy. Edge is in AEW confirmed. We now know it to be true. If you didn't know it before or you didn't believe it or something like that, now you know. 
Edge is in AEW and he's got his he's got his music. That was something that I'm shocked about. Which tells me is that WWE was paying for that or he or he owns the rights to it. So that I mean dude, can you imagine the amount of wrestlers now that have been um that have that have been able to bring their music around. I mean, you got to believe that that's something that's coming up, that's going to be changed soon. You know, in WWE, maybe. I mean, maybe, but but wrestlers have leverage, you know, nowadays too to say, no, nah, I don't want my music changed. I want to own my music, man. We're going to be, oh man, Tony Khan's going to be on crack tonight. Tony Khan's going to be on full on crack tonight on the media scrum. It's going to be crazy. He's going to be full on coked up tonight, ready to go. My God, bro. And they beat the crap out of Darby Allen in that match, man. They beat the living bejesus out of out of, out of uh, Darby Allen in that match. Dude, they tombstoned him onto the corner of the steps in a crazy ass way. It was crazy. Wow. That was something else. Wow. Edge is all elite. How do you feel about it in the chat? I am going to put up the poll in a second. But Edge is here in AEW. He is he is the answer to the the trauma that CM Punk and the Bucks and whoever else caused in this company. Uh, that was crazy. Wow. Wow. He has his music, too, from WWE. That's crazy. So uh, it was pretty obvious, I thought. Most people believed, especially when this match was made to be the main event. Um, I really love, but, for you know, never mind the edge stuff. I just want to throw that out the window right now. Never mind the edge stuff. Um, the match was really well done. Like, I, I like forget about everything else. I, w I wasn't loving tonight that much. I wasn't fully invested in the show. You know what I mean? But I got to tell you, dude, that that match, you know, if Edge had not come out, that match, the way they had it set up and with Nick Wayne and everything they did, that was still really good. You know, like it was well done anyway. It was good. I don't remember if they, 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 they they're not saying Edge, they're saying Rated R Superstar. So, or someone said rated R superstar. Now they may call him Adam. They may call him Adam Copeland. They may call him Adam. I don't know what they're going to call him, but the only thing that I heard uttered about him tonight, I didn't hear them say edge. And you can let me know if you guys heard differently. I didn't hear them say edge. I heard them say, you know, the rated R superstar is here. That's what I heard. I thought Nick Wayne actually did a good job tonight. I've been annoyed by Nick Wayne in the past. Like, I don't care about this new one, two. They have a new one, two, three kid every, like, five weeks. Every, every like, three months, AEW is another one, two, three kid. Like, another young guy who's supposed to be amazing something and, like, whatever happens with the guy. But so tonight, um, you know, they, they – uh, but the, I thought they utilized him really well tonight, man. I got to give it up to them tonight for this. This was impressive. The match, the main event was impressive. Dude, they tombstoned Darby Allen into the like the rigid parts of the steps. I have never seen. That was one of the most horrific. I think it is. Maybe the most horrific uh steel steps spot that I've ever seen. That was a crazy crazy thing. I've never seen it that bad. I want you guys to chime in tonight via super chat down below. What do you think of, of Edge or whatever 
Adam, superstar, rated R, rated X, rated sex, whatever. What do you think of him being in AEW? Um, I'm going to put the donation link down below. You can use Streamlabs. Uh, Streamlabs link down below. It's also pinned to the top of the comments section, or you guys can feel free to super chat if you like. I'll try to read the comments in the chat the best I can, though. And obviously, I appreciate everybody hitting the like button and everybody that's been here all night with me hanging out as we react to everything, uh, whether it was the Kansas City football game, the Jets earlier, and, of course, all of AEW Wrestle Dream tonight. We're getting ready for Cracked Out Tony Khan to come on the mic later. You know he's going to be... Dude, his head's going to explode. Yes? Uh, Fightful, I'll take a question from you. We thought Edge uh, was going to be really good tonight, and um, we, knew, we, we knew that people pretty much had an idea of what might be happening, but... You know, you will you go out to do something and it ha ah, 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 ah. like so yeah, I mean Tony Khan is gonna be beside himself later with glee. And you know he should be because they pulled this off tonight. I've been going to wrestling shows for over thirty years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Mm. Right, or or, or or I thought maybe Sting was going to turn, too. I thought maybe Sting would come out and be like, well, here's Sting to save Darby Allen, or, you know, whatever the hell, that sort of thing. And then Sting would actually attack Darby Allen. I thought, I didn't know what was going to happen at that point. Anything could be going on all over the place. The Nick Wayne thing threw me for a curveball, so I didn't see that happening. You know, he didn't, obviously his mom didn't see that happening, it seemed like, too, but, uh, you know. It is what it is. Um, thank you, Gerald Armstrong, for the three bucks, my friend. So Edge is here. Edge is a traitor. How long until Eddie Kingston says, I don't like you, and the locker room doesn't like you? <laughs> yeah, you know, the locker room doesn't like outsiders. That's one thing we can say. Or, or, okay, not the locker room. Not the locker room, the whole locker room or whatever. But, I mean, the, um, the elite part of the locker room you know what I mean like they they essentially kind of you know pissed off Cody Rhodes and irritated him to where he eventually left they clearly didn't get along with CM Punk so there's that so will they get along with Edge that is a good question and it's worthy of questioning right like will they get along with him I get that. Um, the the Darth Knight says, hopefully, I'm excited Edge is all elite, but Edge needs to retire in WWE. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think I would be happy if Edge had a had a run in AEW, and then eventually, you know, had a last little run in WWE someday. I would think that's the that's how you paint the dream. You know, that's how I would paint the dream. That's how I would do it. What a showing tonight. Edge is all elite. Edge is in AEW. And he's got his music. He's got his music. He's got the music from WWE. This was tweeted by Tony Khan... On Twitter, Adam Copeland is all elite. So he's going by, probably by Adam. The rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. So there you go. Rated R superstar is in there. And so they'll probably call him uh, Adam. But he's not Adam Cole, baby. He's Adam Copeland, baby. The rated R superstar, Adam Copeland, baby. So there's a lot of Adams going on in AEW at this point. What did you guys think? And and honestly, guys, we've been kind of lucky because even though, um, while wow, the poll numbers are crazy right now, 700 votes have now put Wrestle Dream over w NXT No Mercy. 
barely. 60% to 40%. I thought NXT No Mercy had had a pretty pretty good show. Probably one of the better NXTs of the last three years, I guess. And the main event was pretty good, too. But um, tonight's main event, just the main event itself was really good, I thought. And then, obviously, the big, sh the big you know, edge or, or whatever debut is, you know, going to blow things out of the water for a lot of people. So, obviously. Shit bum. Donation coming in. Need an edge in Christian Los Conquistadores reunion. Los Conquistadores. Los Conquistadores. Los Conquistadores. Oh, Mr. Pico Boulevard, $2 super chat. Thank you for the uh, super chat, Mr. Pico Boulevard, and funding this show, Mr. Pico Boulevard. I, um, you know what I would like? I would like if Ed... Holy shit! In my wildest fantasy. We haven't seen him in a long time! He's alive! Back for me. It's the Soundwave 92! On the thunder and rising with the heat. It's gonna take a Superman to sweep me off my feet. Doom, 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 doom. I need a hero. I'm holding up for a hero till the end of the night. And he's gotta be strong and he's gotta be fast. He's gotta I never thought Edge would leave WWE but couldn't resist the bag. Right. And this PPV is the best one and have done this year. 8.5 out of 10. I will be shocked if Darby is walking in 10 years and respect to Christian adopting Nick Wayne just to bang his mom. Right. All right. The Soundwave 92. Dropping the big $40. Soundwave 92. You have awoken Satan. Thank you, Soundwave92, for awakening Satan with that donation of $40. Yeah, so much to say out of your donation. And I had something to say, too, real quickly, that, you know, despite all of what, what you may have thought of NXT and what you may have thought tonight of AEW, one thing you got to say is wrestling, you know, outside of the main WWE roster... AEW and NXT have kind of thrown a little punch back, you know? They've kind of thrown their hands up in the air a little bit to say, like, hey, we're here, we're still here, let's go. So that's good news to me. You know, whatever you thought of the last couple of days, Moss Blaze has been kicked off the board. Soundwave 92 has uh, arisen back with the $40 spot, the top dono of the stream now, taking over Moss Blaze. Uh, thank you so much. Soundwave, thank you so much, man, for that. That was awesome, and that really helps me out. So I really, really appreciate that $40 drop. He will be Adam Copeland, but he can also be the, the Rated R Superstar. So he can be Rated R Superstar Adam Copeland. So this was tweeted out by Tony Khan, so we do have that. So that's that's official. So I don't know if he's going to go by Adam or whatever. I'm assuming that's the case. But uh, apparently he can use Rated R Superstar. And also he can use his music from uh, WWE. Let's go back really quickly to the moment where we realized that Edge was coming out. And you guys can hear my reaction. So that's, that's a case you missed it a few minutes ago. See if we can get it here. Because I was uh, kind of losing my mind. Let's see. So he's going by, probably by Adam. Of Edge or whatever. Adam. 
Certainly, I didn't hear them say edge. In a here it is. That was crazy. Okay. The lights go out and we have to watch like a movie trailer for somebody. Like it's a little too, you know, ridiculous, right? Why this would that part. play? You know what I mean? Why would that play? It's so stupid. Holy shit. He's got his music. Oh my God. He's got his music. I had no idea that this was owned by Edge. Boom. Holy shit. That's crazy. And they've got Pyro. You would think he was in WWE right now. Yeah, and uh, you know, Impact could 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 you know add some talent too. I mean, it's really weird. It's it's almost like, you know, while WWE is shrunken a bit with you know the three million people, the two point five million to two million to one point eight, um, you know, some of these smaller companies are starting to inch their way up. If AEW can get to just over a million, 1.2 million, something like that, that would be a really good spot for them to be at for the time being. And, uh, you know, Impact Wrestling draws about 100,000 people. So if they could get back to 300,000, 400,000, 500,000 sometime, then you would really see this little slide up going on with some of the wrestling um, when, when most things have been really going downward for so long at this point. But Edge is all elite. Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe. <laughs> Scissor me, Bullfrog. Catman actually said this was one of the greatest main events in and greatest main event of the year. Catman has to be drunk. That match wasn't even that great. Everything else was better than that damn match. How was that main event the greatest? I thought the main event was really good psychologically, you know, psychology-wise. I don't know, man. I think that was one of the best main events of the year, psychology-wise. I mean, fuck Catman. New subscriber. But you fucking mark! Bakayuda. Oh, no, Bakayuka. Thank you for subbing to the channel, Bakayuka. Back that ass up. Baka that ass up. Baka da hamada. Uh, no, good to have you here with us, man. Thank you for uh, for subbing. I am surprised the Jets, man, they hung in there. They tried to battle, bro. Unlike the Patriots earlier, took a turd on themselves. But yeah, no, I'd have to I'd have to say that I mean Alter Bridge owns the song, not a E W W E, says Sly Fox. Yeah, so that means Alter Bridge never sold it to um to to anybody, I guess. I guess Alter Bridge just rented it or allowed WWE to use it. And now um You know, it's the same situation as, uh, you know, CM Punk's music and some of the other ones. Cody Rhodes' music. All that stuff. Thank you, Picharo, for the uh, donation. People need to stop thinking flippy doodah and quick wrestling is good wrestling, says Joe Dubs 35 yeah, there's a lot of that tonight that I didn't like. I wasn't into a lot of the wrestling tonight. You know, I didn't care. I thought Zack Sabre Jr. and Daniel and Brian Danielson, that I did not care. Their little kicky footy play, their little footsie play, and flip flops and wrist locks and flim flams and whatever they did. Like I, I didn't give a shit about that. I did not like it. I was like, this sucks. I don't care about this. <laughs> like, that's why I'm saying I thought the main event was that good. I really did like the main event. Because I like the psychology of it. The crowd was fully into it, which is always great. That's what you want. But it's not just that the crowd was entirely into it. It's that, you know, it. it's like the psychology of it was well done. And they had little twists and turns and fun stuff that went on to keep my attention. And it felt like something important was going to happen. And yeah, the, the buildup of Edge probably being there. That obviously added to it, too, and just, just so much added to that that main event to make it exciting. 
it felt like an NXT main event from like six years ago. And it felt like uh, an, an AEW thing that happened two years ago, you know, when they were doing exciting stuff like that, like debuts and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't know. What is the average amount people have for their discretionary spending after bills? Okay. Crazy. Uh, Bullfrog just messaged me and he said, New subscriber. Seth is going to drop the belt. Mark. Mr. Jack the Hedgehog. Thanks for subbing to the channel, Mr. Jack. How you doing, man? Uh, appreciate you, man. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for subbing. You fucking Mark. Seth is going to drop the belt at Fastlane, and then Seth Rollins is heading for AEW. <laughs> That's what Bullfrog just said in a DM to me on Twitter. Bullfrog, why don't you call the show and say that? Welcome to the team, Tony Khan says about Edge, or as, as he's going to be called, Adam Copeland, rated R superstar. Edge is all elite. He he did write Edge rated R is all elite, but that's because his name on Twitter is Edge rated R. That's it. Triple H is breaking stuff. Triple H is breaking stuff. Let's hear the pop. That was uh that was pretty crazy. Isn't Ultra Bridge too? Didn't when Ultra Bridge uh became a band, weren't they hey, like Bullfrog is a moron? Oh shit. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe! <laughs> Edge has an absentee father and a dead mother. Oh my god, Gerald Armstrong. You think that's yeah, that's probably what Christian is going to say. That's right. Christian is definitely going to go there. Well, like he like he did earlier. Let's play that clip. Do we have that clip again or I might have lost. Oh, here it is. Here's the clip. I know Jungle Boy, he looked at me like a father figure. He sure did. But here's the thing, Jungle Boy. I never wanted to be your father. I never wanted to be your father figure. You have a father. But your father's dead. Dead. But your father's dead. Dead, 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 dead. Yo, but your father's Are dead. You introduce me to your little friend, Nick Wayne. I understand that you have a father. Borgo also had a father. Pillman, you had a father. Are you going to introduce me to your little friend, Nick Wayne? I understand that you have a father. Borgo also. Why is he upset? Why is Christian obsessed with everybody's fathers and stuff? It is kind of funny, like right? Like, it's pretty funny. Christian is obsessed with people's non-existent, dead, out-of-the-picture fathers at this point. And it's kind of fucking hilarious. I was given bread and bread comes and I wanted a full-course meal. Ricky Stark sucks. He sucks on, he sucks fucking, he sucks hot ice. I was given bread and bread comes and I wanted a full course meal. You really need to try Claca Casantes. <laughs> Dude, but remember, Tony Khan's life was in danger. So, you know, you got to worry about that. My life was in danger. But yeah, I really liked uh, the way I liked the way the main event was designed. I liked the, the planning that went into that. Apparently, you know, the, the psychology, it was executed well. Um... 
I thought the crowd was just so into it. It helped everything out. Yeah, so I, I really don't have the complaints. If somebody is praising that main event as, like, one of the best things of the year or whatever, I mean, I agree with that. So, I, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't disagree with that. Whatever people say, you know. Um. Yeah, I think it's great. It's inspiring to see so many adopted celebrity kids transition. Yeah, it's weird. It's almost like, for some reason, celebrity kids transition like 60% more often than other kids. I mean, I don't think it's the celebrities like grooming them into a certain way or Munchausen syndrome type of stuff. It's probably just a coincidence that so many celebrities, kids, um, are born one way but go the other. You know, it's probably not anything to really worry about. You know, I think it's just luck of the draw, you know. I don't know. Gerald Armstrong, thanks for the $3. Hit that like button and let's go take a look at the poll because NXT No Mercy versus Wrestle Dream, 966 votes. We are closing in. No Mercy, 37%. AEW Wrestle Dream, 63%. So, I mean, I, I obviously at this point it isn't really fair anymore with, you know, Edge showing up um, in AEW. So it's quite it's quite a different situation now that it's turned into. Now imagine now if Edge didn't show up, like there would have been potential hell to pay for a lot. I think a lot of people would have been very angry about this. You know, had he not showed up. You know, I'm betting. It's my bet. But we'll see. Anyway. Let's check out the chat and let's see what we got. Soundwave 92 still here with the mod wrench. Jeff, what's up, Jeff? Steve Langenheim's here. Alfredo's here. T Dot says they had to re record the intro to the song, though. Yeah, it sounded, yeah, that sounded a little different. I thought maybe he had a new song and so he was just saying that part. But yeah, I was very shocked. I guess it makes sense, you know, with Alter Bridge, you know, owning the song. It's just I didn't really. It's so. Like. Synonymous with WWE, you know, but I wonder if they're going to start doing stuff with theme music now because people are just going everywhere. I love that Cody Rhodes has had the same theme on the indies in AEW in impact in WWE. Now, I love that that themes follow them to every company. Oh, shit. It is Brad. Satterfield just scissor me scissor me scissor me scissor me daddy scissor me all I want you to do is scissor me We will all never agree on wrestling whether it's psychology or flippy due to stuff but this is the best wrestling has been since very early 2000s. Um you know, I will say that since uh, maybe you might be right Brad, uh, Brad. I mean thank you Brad for the 999 by the way. Brad dropping the 999 super chat if you guys want a super chat, they're on, baby. And I really appreciate the support. Obviously, my life has been fucked over the last couple of weeks. 
But you know what? It's kind of fucked every week if you listen to me. It's been, things have been fucking crazy. So I really, really do appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and me with that money. Um, that really, really is amazing. Thank you, sir. Um, but, yeah, I mean, honestly, it, it, to, to me, things started to change quite a bit when NXT was launched. When NXT was launched the way it was, and WWE was so terrible, NXT gave us that alternative to watch. And then when AEW launched, it started destroying NXT. Like, NXT began destro like going away because of AEW. So it's so weird because NXT was happening and becoming huge because of the thirst for the alternative type of presentation that NXT provided. So you had WWE still you could watch, but then you had NXT, which was my favorite thing to watch. And then, be and then AEW launches, and you're like, awesome, AEW now. This is so cool. Now we got NXT, AEW, WWE, like it's everything. It's all this great stuff to watch. But AEW, you know, inadvertently or inadvertently, you know, whatever, uh, ends up kind of changing NXT and ruining it. Um, and that's self-inflicted by Vince McMahon wanting them to beat AEW and they couldn't or whatever it was. And then he just blew the whole NXT up and that changed the whole dynamic. And NXT really hasn't fully recovered since then. It's not the NXT we knew, but for about five years, NXT was a unbelievable promotion that Triple H like was in charge of and that that will that will be looked at that will be looked at as one of the moments in wrestling and I said this back when it was happening when we were watching NXT Brooklyn take over 2 and whatever I said on my reviews here or there I said this is a time in wrestling that you're always going to remember this is a moment this is a time like this is you know there there was the 80s that we remember there was the early 90s there was the the terrible years in the mid '90s. There was the Attitude Era, you know. There was the 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 ruthless aggression era, and then there was that time where WWE just kind of became lame after 2008. But you won't remember that really. You'll just remember I didn't I didn't like it. But then, you know. Um, that time when NXT, the first NXT takeover happened and Triple H stood in the ring and said, we are NXT. Like, that's a time period, about five years or so, that we're all going to remember. Dude, I'll never forget it. I'll, I cherish that time period when, you know, another new superstar was coming in, a wrestler was coming into NXT. Now Nakamura was here and Sami Zayn versus Nakamura and like what the women did with Charlotte and Sasha Banks and Bailey and just so on and so on. And it just went on and on and on and going to WrestleMania and seeing NXT multiple times. And even into the velvet dream, velveteen dream and Pete Dunn match that I saw post or pre WrestleMania. There was just so much stuff NXT did and it was a great time. And I think that time is obviously gone but the other night, No Mercy NXT was was an, was pretty good show. And it was one of the better ones that they've done since NXT has died, really, of the 2.0 NXT or whatever they call it now. But AEW, um, the last four years of AEW have been a wonderful time in wrestling, too, for the most part. Yeah, there's some things that we criticize about AEW like we criticize all wrestling. But, um, you know, that main event tonight was fun to me and, and the debut was fun. And, and then they're going to celebrate four years of uh, Dynamite. And I was at the second Dynamite ever in Boston. And it was, man, it was exciting. It was fun. It was exciting. And it was really cool how it started. And shocking how it's, you know, it's shocking that CM Punk was here and was fired by the company. That's crazy. It's shocking that Cody Rhodes left the company. 
it's shocking what the company has kind of, you know, turned into, but all good things must come to an end and, you know, all systems are breaking down. Entropy is always happening in everything, whether it's the floor, the grass, the walls, your life, your food, a company, whatever. Entropy is happening everywhere and all systems are breaking down. But can you build them back up fast enough? Can you build them back up? Can you reinvent them? Can you represent them fast enough knowing that entropy is inevitable in some form or another, in many forms and others, and uh, that you need to come up with that sort of uh, solution to keep everything going, man. Thank you so much for those donations, too, by the way. Any others, I will play them, and I will uh, we will play them and talk about them. Uh, Streamlabs link is pinned to the top of the stream right below the poll. Feel free to use that link if you guys like what I do and you want to support you want to help me and help the show and help me keep going, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, just subscribe for free, or you can become a member down below. You can do all the things all over YouTube, but nobody gets as erect down there as I do when you do any of those things. Um, Cody in WWE is outdrawing everything in AEW, says repeat the one more time, repeat that one more time. Yeah, I mean, WWE is king. WWE is still king, and they will be, because even when AEW had their biggest push, you know, they still were only at 1.1, 1.2 million. So that's not something that I would, you know, be really worried about. AEW has already uh, uploaded the, uh, the Thank debut. You for joining us tonight. They've already up the, uh, uploaded on YouTube the uh, debut of Edge. Good idea by AEW. Pretty cool. Um, let's hear a little bit. Well, we got nothing yet so far. Dude, they still haven't even started the media scrum. Like, they are still doing, like, probably coke and an orgy in the back that they still haven't started the media scrum yet. I thought we were going to get to hear it, but, yeah, they haven't even gotten that going. I was given bread and bread comes, and I wanted a full-course meal. Mm. Edge's face is all sunken like an attic. Really? Edge is definitely not doing... I, I don't believe Edge is doing drugs. I got to be honest. I don't think that's happening. And I want to thank Soundwave92 for the top donation of the night. The $40 drop by the Soundwave92. Edge looking like the Unibon. <laughs> Jesus. Full course meal, baby. Hit that like button. We're, we're going to head up to 200 likes soon. How about that? Man, I really wish the scrum was on. I thought they would be on with the scrum by now. They're really blowing each other backstage. Let's hear it. Love Stephen Wright. It's my birthday recently. My Let's hear it. Wow. Look at this. Oh, what a loser I am. Edge is all elite. <laughs> What kind of money did Tony Khan pay to have Edge show up in AEW? I almost, you know, I was combusting earlier like that. of questioning right like will they get along with him I get that um the the Darth Knight says hopefully I'm excited Edge is all elite but Edge needs to retire in WWE yeah I mean I think um I think I would be happy if Edge had a had a run in AEW and then eventually you know had a last little run 
in WWE someday. I would think that's the that's how you paint the dream. You know, that's how I would paint the dream. That's how I would do it. What a showing tonight. Edge is all elite. Edge is in AEW. And he's got his music. He's got his music. He's got the music from WWE. This was tweeted by Tony Khan on Twitter. Adam Copeland is all elite. So he's going by probably by Adam. You know why I call my kids fuck superstar Adam Copeland. So there you go. Rated R superstar is in there. And so they'll probably call him uh, Adam. But he's not Adam Cole, baby. He's Adam Copeland, baby. The rated R superstar, Adam Copeland, baby. Keep on playing your video games, stinky ass boy. In AEW at this point. What did you guys think? And and honestly, guys, we've been kind of lucky because even though, um, well, the let's hear it for the newest member of the AEW roster, Mr. Adam Copeland. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me. So, so what's new? <laughs> Sorry, I went for the obvious. This is going to be excellent. Here we go. Here we go. We got some uh, clips from the scrum with Adam and Tony Khan. Well, I'd like to begin uh, by welcoming Adam to AEW. And I thought it was a great show tonight. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight at AEW Wrestle Dream. Uh, it was an amazing event. Thanks to all of you. And I'd like to announce Adam Copeland has officially signed with AEW. Yeah. Congrats on being all elite and something I'm really excited about, uh, something that I think is going to set this apart and uh, something that got me even more excited uh, about Adam being here is this is full time. Adam's going to be with us every week. He's going to wrestle. He's a full time part of the AEW roster. I think it's going to be a long time since anybody's seen Adam Copeland wrestle uh, as much in it. and at the level he's been in AEW. He's already been doing great stuff. He's wrestling at the highest level in recent years, but he's going to be here on a weekly basis. And it's something I'm so excited. Wow. about. Full time. Wow. Thank uh, thanks for having me. I um, part of coming here is that I wanted to contribute. Um, I, uh, I wanted to help. And I just felt like here, I'd really be able to do that and have the opportunity to do that. And I look at an entire fresh roster of faces and, and so many talent that I've never laid hands on before. And that, that to me, as a person who is uh, driven by challenges, that for me was the biggest thing. Like I've never been in a ring with Samoa Joe. I've never stood in a ring with Sting before tonight. After 31 years in the industry, that's never happened. Um, and then I see a guy like Nick Wayne or I see Swerve. There's, there's just so many possibilities here. And for me at this stage of my career, that is so enticing. That is so exciting. That is so, uh, you know, I, I said it out there <clears throat> after the fact, when I came back out there tonight, I felt free. I, that's just the word that, that pop, like I, I felt free and it felt fun. And I felt almost like the same feeling I would have when I'd, I'd come out for my indie shows. You know, back when I was either Adam Impact or Sex and Hardcastle or something, and it was this brand new thing that I always wanted to do, and 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 that feeling, I felt it out there tonight. And that, at this stage of my career, to feel that, that's special. That's a uh, man, like, come on, thirty-one years in, and to feel that way, that that's a gift. And this is all I ever wanted to do, and this feels like an opportunity to come in and not just come in every three months. Like, I'm gonna be there every week. You know, I'm a, I'm a full-time guy, and. Uh, I want to do that for as long as that is possible because I feel like that's how I can help the most. And um, more than anything, that's that's what I'm here to do. It's great news. And uh, in even more great news, uh, we're going to hear from Adam Copeland, the Rated R Superstar, for the first time ever on AEW Dynamite this Wednesday night. Perfect way to begin a new era and to celebrate the fourth anniversary of AEW Dynamite. So I'm really excited to have you uh, this Wednesday in Stockton on Dynamite for the first time ever. Yeah, I'll give the mission statement uh, and kind of uh, explain uh, what happened tonight and um, and what my thought process was there because there was a, a lot of different things going on emotionally out there tonight. Um, hey, Keith, how you doing? Good to see you. It's been a while. Um, yeah, man, like if you can't tell, I, I'm pretty excited and I feel like a little kid again. And uh, this is the best gig in the world. It, it really is. I'm a kid from Southern Ontario and this is all I ever wanted to do. And if you had told me that 98% of what would happen to me throughout my career would happen, I'd say, you're crazy. Well, throw this onto the list and at the top of the list now, because my God, it just, uh, man, I just, I can't tell you how excited and, and even just, so I'll tell you a story. Uh, Friday, I fly here Friday, right? And uh, I call Darby and I'm like, hey, Darby, you're a Seattle guy, right? So I want to get a muscle car. And do you got any cool sites that we could shoot? So we just went and gorilla shot Friday night 
from like nine to midnight. And I'm hanging out of the back of an SUV, holding the cameraman while this muscle car is going 50 miles an hour down gum. Wow. Like, so like all, all these wrestlers come in AEW all the time and they, they create now these vignettes. Like it's well known that all the wrestlers create a vignette, but they don't create a vignette or like a story or a thing. A lot of times that we see every week building up to them. A lot of times recently, I think at least half of them have been things that we've only seen once, like on the debut. So it's essentially an intro that they created. So it's just really, it, that is very interesting to me that they created that intro like the other day, like him and Darby. Like, I mean, this is, that's kind of fucking crazy. Alley, was it Gum Alley? with all the gum, it was just disgusting and awesome at the same time. And I'm just like, I'm hanging out of an SUV holding the cameraman and I'm just cackling at 49 years old. Like, this is amazing. What, what are we doing? This is awesome. And again, back to that word, just free. Damn, he's 49. I'm only, I'm Sorry, 40. I'm it's great. That's amazing. And uh, I, I love seeing you like this. I'm so glad you're happy to be here and you're jumping right into the fire. Not only are you uh, going to be making your first ever appearance on Dynamite this Wednesday, but then the following week, uh, first of all, you're also coming to Collision, I believe, in Utah yes. on the 7th. So he's working both shows this week. We're going to see uh, Adam Copeland, the Rated R Superstar, Wednesday night, Dynamite in Stockton for the first time ever. And we'll see him for the first time ever on Collision this Saturday. And then the following week, Dynamite is actually going to be on Tuesday, October 10th. For title Tuesday, it's my birthday. It's going to be a great event. We're going to have a great time. I'm very excited about it. And I got the greatest birthday present in the world because the newest member of the AEW roster, the Rated R Superstar, Mr. Adam Copeland, has requested a match on October 10th in Kansas City. And uh, we got a little preview of that action tonight on Wrestle Dream. Based on your request, it's going to be Adam Copeland, the Rated R Superstar, versus Luchasaurus on Tuesday, October 10th in Kansas City. And Luchasaurus is a multiple-time champion, one of the toughest wrestlers in AEW. It's going to be a great debut match for you. It, it, it'll be hard. Um, <laughs> but I, I've, uh, I will say Luchasaurus is a guy that I always saw and uh, saw so much potential in, in what he brings to the table. Um, it's also kind of jumping into the deep end of the pool, but that's that's what I do. It's awesome. So great. <laughs> and uh, and we can take some questions, Mandy, if you want to. All right, thank what you. We get one from both of yeah. you. Okay, um, lyrics went monthly here, so. So compared to a lot of your other peers um, from your generation, you spent most of your career in one company. Yep. So now that you're in AEW, what are one or two of those bucket list items that you're looking to accomplish, whether it's an opponent or a match type? What's something that you're really excited to do? You know, when I talked to Tony, I said, just in looking at the roster very quickly, like there's 14 names. I mean, that's just from a quick little cursory glance. But like I said, I mean, I've never faced Samoa Joe. That's really exciting to me. I've never faced or been in the same ring as John Moxley. Highly interesting to me. Claudio, never been in the ring. Like, there's so many different talent here that I have a lot of respect for, and I'd really like to, to feel what that is. Um, Kenny Omega, like, that's never happened. I've just met him. We've never met before. You know, um, there, There's a lot here um, to see and to, to challenge myself with. And again, that's my entire life has been built on challenges. So to, to look at that, oh, God, a guy like me, that's just... That's a steak dinner waiting to be eaten. Emily May with Sports Heater Wrestling. Hi. So everyone was so excited, the fan reaction to have you debut tonight. And what I would love to know is how did these conversations begin? And what can we look forward to, not only perhaps in ring, but also will you be helping out backstage perhaps in developing AW talent or creating storylines? Um, I've always been a person that enjoys that process in terms of being heavily involved in the creative process and the direction of storylines, helping add little things. But those little things, when you put them together, they start to weigh a lot. Um, I love that. I love detail, um, attention to detail and, and just the edge is, uh, I mean, edge is pretty excited here. It's good. Looking good. I wonder if he made this decision too. part of it, because like when the whole Hollywood writer strike was going on too, He's like, well, it's going to take me like four months until stuff ever starts shooting again whenever they get it going back again anyway. I got to do something, you know? So I wonder if that's part of it. New subscriber. You, you know, Donna. fight, Mark! Donna. Donna, thank you for subbing to the channel. What's up, Donna? Donna. You know you want to. Donna, that sounds really creepy. The little nuances, I, I love that. Uh, you know, I watch movies and I just, oh, oh why they make that choice? I used to follow directors around and they'd be so annoyed. I'm like, why are you making that choice? Why are we turning around here? Why are we getting this angle? I go to the DOP, go, what's going on here? What's going on with this lighting? I'm just fascinated. Um, 
that's part of why I fell in love with this industry uh, is the storytelling element of it. You know, it, it's a form of art and that's how I've always looked at it. And now it's an even more nuanced form of art uh, because it's such more, it's so much more detailed and the audience is so much more intelligent. So you have to work to that intelligence. And I absolutely plan to be helping out whoever wants help. Whoever comes and talks to me, I am an open book. Um, and my 31 years of experience, if you want to tap into that, I am always, I'm a phone call, I'm a text, I'm a come talk to me face to face away. That's always been how I've been. Um, so, you know, there, there were guys like I had a group of seven people and I'd FaceTime with them an hour a day to help them find. Well, wait till you find the treatment that uh, William Regal got when it comes to that. <laughs> and their voice and promos. I love doing that stuff. Um, so that's part of what I think I bring to the table when, when I come here. And, uh, and honestly, that, that was one of the things, one of the really pivotal things beside my daughter telling me that I should go be with Uncle Jay and have fun um, that I thought I could really try and help here. And in turn, that helps the entire wrestling industry, which is the thing that I just love. Uh, second behind my my wife and my kids. We can do a few more, I think. Yeah, I'm on a roll. Yeah, he's on fire. <laughs> Hello again. Hello again. Uh, Keith, Keith Elliott Greenberg with Inside the Ropes magazine. You mentioned that you were here Friday night. Now, there's a lot of people in this room who I think, had there been an Adam Copeland sighting, they would not have been able to contain themselves from tweeting about it. How did you manage to keep yourself scarce? <laughs> oh, man, I was sequestered. I sequestered myself in a hotel room. Um, how did he hide then? I mean, was he in a mask hidden in? I mean, I guess he's about to answer this, but I mean, you know, was he in, like, what the hell? So we're, we're, I mean, we were in some sketchy neighborhoods. Like Darby took us to some, some sketchy places. It's like, ain't nobody here going to worry about like Adam Copeland being here kind of thing. Right. So, um, nobody's <laughs> awesome. And then I, uh, I went to my hotel Whoa. room and I just like sneak out to get food. And this one kid, bless his heart, I'm at this burger joint and I just really want a cheeseburger because I hadn't eaten for 14 hours. And I was like, I just, I just want to get a cheeseburger. So I'm in there and I'm sitting there and reading my book because I bring a book everywhere when I eat. And I looked up and he went, oh. I went, okay, okay. And that was it. That was the, the only time that I had that encounter because the rest of the time I was like, you know, put in all that. So, um, so yeah, that's what, that's what happened. I was out in Redmond. That's great. That's pretty I funny know. that he ran into somebody who, and he said, shush. And the person didn't pull out their phone and go, it's just here. Like it didn't happen like that moment. Cause it would have been, I mean, people really thought edge was coming. We pretty much all knew what was going on anyway, but still someone saying, Oh, he's here. Here's a picture. We've got a sighting. Like that would really have like, sort of like been like, okay, like that would have once you really 100% fully, it's been like, like there's a picture of him. It's like, all right. Like that ruins it a little more and more, chips off at it more and the fun. So, you know, for the guy to keep that quiet, assuming that's what happened, um, that's pretty good. You know, that that's uh that's pretty good stuff. My name's Amanda from WrestleTalk.com. Oh my god, I'm <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. You sound excited. I am. <laughs> I'm um, horny. So I've been authorized to ask this question. Um, I'm not asking anything about contracts or anything of the like, but my favorite version of Adam Copeland is when he's with his lovely wife. Is there any chance that we might see you together here, or is that something that you'd like to do in the future again? I mean, anytime I get to, to be close to Beth, obviously I'm going to you know be pretty, like super excited about that. I, I don't know about the possibilities of that in the foreseeable, um, but I, you know, I just I love being around her, obviously. Um, and, uh, and and we've had a blast when we did get to work together. Um, but where she will be uh, instrumental without anyone knowing it is she's my sounding board. So if you've seen me do something or you see something that you think worked, it was always bounced off Beth. And then she always gives me better ideas back. Um, it's kind of amazing to be married to a Hall of Famer. It's pretty cool. Who can suplex you? Oh, yeah. She can do more than suplex you. Anyways, guys and girls and everybody watching right now, we've been live for a long time. I've gone way past my bedtime. I was supposed to get off the air at... Normally on Sundays, 10, maybe 11. It's 12.53. I had a crazy-ass day today, so I am going to wrap it up. I would point you in the direction of the media scrum to listen to more. Here's the link in the chat. If you want to support what I do and you like what I do and you want me doing this even more, of course, become a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Thanks to all the $25 producers and patrons. Um, guys, uh, you may have not re-upped on Patreon. Please think about going over to my Patreon. You get over a thousand podcasts and, po and crazy shit that isn't on YouTube, and it's all there, the catalog of all the podcasts, especially if you like comedy, funny shit, and weird, crazy stuff and podcasts, and the corrupted podcasts, and so much more, all on Patreon. Please check it out, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. All of our shows are there. Um, 
it's uh, we'll be here tomorrow night for a little bit of Monday Night Raw review. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys who donated tonight using Streamlabs up top. Or if you super chatted or became a member, thank you, Spectral Citizen. Thank you all. And um, pretty crazy. Adam Copeland, the rated R superstar, is here in AEW. He's all elite. We had over a thousand votes on the poll. Holy shit. All right, guys, I'll catch you. Uh, I'll catch you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And thanks to Soundwave92. He was the top donation of the night. 40 bucks coming in from Soundwave. Thank you so much, Soundwave, for dropping the big one. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. I'm playing your video games, stinky ass boy. What do you want with a broomstick? <laughs>